Hi, this is Dan Lexi from Dan Schultz Outdoors, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. Hey y'all, I'm Johnny. And I'm Colleen. And, and we're, we're the Keel Quest. Quest. And, and we, we want, want you to keep, keep the adventures, adventures alive. alive. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, this is Darren from My Paddle Repeat, encouraging you to keep the adventures alive. This is David from Beachley Ironworks, saying keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Dan Mayock. Keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Kevin Collin, the Happy Camper. Remember, keep the adventures alive. Awesome! Shug here. Keep the adventures alive. I am. Ethan here, the Avid Outdoorsy guy, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. We're John and Aaron. Keep the adventures alive. Hey everyone, it's Kylan from Lure of the North and I encourage you to keep the adventures alive. This is Sky North telling you Keep the adventures alive. And now on with the show. Hey, well, happy Tuesday evening, everybody, and welcome to the finale of Season 2 of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. It's greatly appreciated. And, man, have we got a basement full of great people for you tonight on the show. Uh, my name is Dennis, also known as Canoe Hound, and if this is your first time to uh, be watching the show here, welcome. But you know what? You picked the very last show of the season. Hope you enjoy it, but don't fret. We have, I have a whole library of 75 previous episodes that if you're looking to find some of your favorite YouTubers, some of your favorite content or, or topics on the outdoors, go back and check out our uh, video library under uh, Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show right here on the Canoe Hound Adventures channel. And uh, there's hours and hours and hours of viewing opportunities for you to uh, take advantage of. So by all means, please do that. Uh, I got quite the spreadsheet written up tonight because uh, we have a lot to cover tonight. Uh, we're going to be a little bit here, a little bit there, so it's going to be a fun night. Uh, first things first, let's get started with a little bit of uh, news and updates. Tonight's show is sponsored by our good friends over at Kid Products. Uh, Kid Products have been a longtime supporter of the show, and you know what? Uh, they stepped up to the plate tonight. They make uh, twig stoves, um, they make uh, reflector ovens, and they have a whole bunch of outdoor adventure supplies. You know what? Check them out. Their products are made in Canada. Their, their twig stoves and their, uh, their reflector ovens are made in Canada, and they are fantastic pieces of equipment. Very reliable, very sturdy, and they will last you a long time out there in the backcountry. As a matter of fact, I know that a couple of the uh, people you'll see in the show tonight actually use some of their products. So it's just a testament to uh, to the stuff that they put out. 
But by all means, tonight you are going to be hearing about Kid Products quite a bit because, well, like I said, they are a sponsor of the show. And look at that, boing, right up in the corner. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the uh, sponsorship for tonight's show. They are actually giving us tonight, we're giving away a reflector oven during the swag giveaway. So you have to stick around and you have to get your chance to win that uh, reflector oven. That and a couple of... Uh, stainless steel folding uh, cutlery sets so a few really nice prizes plus a whole bunch of other prizes if you want to win you got to stick around they say you can't have it you can't win if you don't have a ticket right so you got to make sure you're around uh last week on our show we had cliff jacobson and we uh spoke of the topic uh, uh to maps and top or maps and compasses and uh you know how sort of like a beginner's guide to that and it was a really difficult show to convey all the information that we needed to uh because you really need to be hands-on feely touchy with that type of thing you know having maps and compasses and and being able to work with that but i hope it encouraged you to maybe pick up your map pick up pick up your compass and maybe do a bit of research and figure out how to use these things these things could really get you from point A to point B, straight as an arrow, and you know what? They could even save you from getting lost in the backcountry. Very, very useful and a helpful skill to know. Everybody that experiences the backcountry, whether it's on foot or by water, by all means, you should definitely, definitely pick up on these skills. Uh, also from last week's show, just wanted to announce the winners. Uh, the winner of uh, a copy of Kevin Ride's Backcountry Eats book, which I finally got mine in the mail. Uh, this book is awesome. You guys and gals have to check this out. Uh, you can find them at backcountryeats.ca, I believe it is. Link is in the basement or in the description below. But there's all kinds of useful information in here on uh, uh, dehydrating food, preparing food, storing food, protection from bears and rodents and all that neat stuff. It's it's a great, uh, great book to have in your library. So check that out. But uh, Mark LaRiche, uh, or yeah, Mark LaRiche won a copy of that there. And also uh, Chantel Sereska, who won a Canoe Hound Adventures prize pack, including a Canoe Hound Adventures baseball cap. So congratulations to you guys, well, to both of you, and your prizes will be in the mail. Um, just waiting for an address from one of you, and uh, that'll be coming to you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to thank everyone who helped support Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show over the past season by becoming channel members, everyone who sent super chats or super stickers uh, during the live streams, and even to all, everybody who subscribed to the channel, hitting that thumbs up button, which really, really helps the channel grow. If you haven't already done so, please hit that thumbs, uh, thumbs up button. It really helps. Um, it's all this support that makes this channel and, and this show grow to the point that it is. You know, uh, the more clout or credentials, I guess, if you want to call it, the better the guests. And we've had some fantastic guests over the past two seasons. Um, this season as well, we've had some great people on. And uh, you know what? We want everybody to hear about us so that we can continue to bring you quality uh, content. And that all comes through support. And especially uh, special support from my show sponsors, people like Kid Products, uh, who's sponsoring tonight's show. Algonquin Outfitters, Backcountry Coffee Company, Great Signs and Graphics, the uh, Short Hills Beard Company. Look at they got this scruff even looking pretty good. And Ursac USA, who uh, stepped up to the plate back when we had our uh, uh, Bear Proof Your Camp uh, episode. So these are all great sponsors. Please do check out their links. You'll also find them down here in the basement. And uh, that's uh, really helpful to support those that support us. And in turn, then they turn around and support us back, right? So that's uh, that's how it all goes uh also uh let's see this is the portion of the show this is something i started a couple weeks ago and it's called the toast to the backcountry essentially what i do now every week is i uh i will be toasting the something to the backcountry and this is our opportunity to crack a beer and uh you know have some well a toast to the backcountry uh it's also brought to you by buymeacoffee.com uh if you'd like to buy me a coffee or a beer at any time feel free to do so buymeacoffee.com forward slash canoe hound is how you would do that I believe it's five dollars for a beer or a coffee. It's a, a high high end coffee. So uh, you know. Anyways, thanks to these people who have actually uh, already bought me a beverage. Greatly appreciated. And I'm going to crack one of these babies with you tonight with our uh, our toast for the backcountry. So tonight's toast is everybody get your beverages ready. Uh, for every drop of rain, eventually is followed by a ray of sunshine. Get out there, seek your rainbow, and keep the adventures alive. Cheers, everybody. Have a great night, and uh, let's enjoy tonight. Oh, I see a lot of glasses tipping in the basement down there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right, uh, on to the next thing, and then we'll be on to our uh, our first guest of the evening. Uh, as I prepare for season three of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, I've already I'm so happy. I've already got a couple of really cool uh, guests lined up for next season, and uh, we're just like I say, nailing down the dates because it's still a little ways down. But uh, I have agreements already with a couple of really big, popular YouTubers. You guys will be surprised to see who they are. But uh, I'm always looking for your ideas for the show. So if you have any ideas, topics, guests that you would like to see on the show into next season, it could be a past guest. It could be some a new up-and-comer. It could be a seasoned veteran, whatever it might be. And not even that doesn't even have to be a YouTuber. It could be anybody in the outdoors industry or somebody that's really good at a specific topic. Please do send me these suggestions to canoehound at gmail.com. I will do my darndest to make it happen. It makes my job a little easier knowing who you would like to see on the show as well. So please, by all means, do send what you have and we will we'll try and make it happen. And then last but not least, tonight's show uh, is a little different because uh, we have multiple guests on. So it's, it's not dedicated to one topic. So we're going to have a lot of things come up tonight. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get to all the questions in the uh, in the comments. But I invite you to still put a question in. If I can get it up, I will. But ultimately, sit back with your cold beverage, your hot beverage, whatever it may be, with your sweetie, by yourself, whatever it is. Sit down, relax, and enjoy the show. Let us do the work and let us entertain you tonight. So, once again, cheers. Now, without further ado, we are going to start with our first guest of the evening. Uh, let me see here, my intros. Our first guest is from episode two of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. She was a contestant on the History Channel show alone, season seven, where she placed very, very well. And I'll tell you, I was rooting for her being our Canadian gal. Uh, her and her husband own and operate a, uh, a company in Ontario's North Country called Lure of the North. Please welcome to the live stream, Kylan Marone. How you doing? Good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Such a long time that we haven't seen each other. It has been, yeah. It's uh, yeah. been a crazy year. <laughs> oh, wow. So what have you been doing to keep busy these days? Um, well, we've been kind of sticking around the homestead. Um, right now we're in the process of clearing out a spot to make a cedar log sauna uh, at the homestead, which is pretty wow. exciting. We've We've been here for eight years and for eight years we've wanted a sauna. So <laughs> I think this year is finally the year that we'll, we'll get that finished hopefully. And um, yeah, we've been starting to plan for uh, our big trip next year, which is, um, you know, going to take up a lot of time in planning it. So we're um, traveling across Ontario from Lake Superior to James Bay uh, in the winter by snowshoe. Wow. And um, yeah, that's going to be along the Missinabe River and Mitch Cotton. And yeah, we've all, got... All a, by foot. Yep, yeah, all by foot. And um, oh. it's, it's a great route because it has uh, a few legs where the CN or the CP rail goes over. Um, mm -hmm. So we can get food drops for that. And um, yeah, it's, it, I've started to plan the food already and, and uh, get some help going and yeah, it's going to be pretty epic. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm pretty excited about it. How, how, how big of a party is going to be taken out on? Uh, so we have uh, a full squad. It's going to be 10 participants plus Dave and I um, that have signed up for the whole 90 days. Um, yeah. yeah, 770 kilometers. Um, All by foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no wonder you were on load. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is crazy. Yeah. So what, what kind of logistics go into planning something like that? Well, I'm finding out. <laughs> yeah, um, I bet. We go. No, um, it's going to be, as far as logistics go, fairly straightforward because um, we actually have some two people who have, because we've done most sections of the Misnabi already um, in the winter. So um, we've had a couple people come along for the ride with us. And there are two people that if they um, do certain sections of, we're calling it the big toe, um, Trans Ontario Expedition, 
And um, if they come on these specific sections, then they'll have walked from Lake Superior to James Bay, but in, in parts. So we are allowing them to kind of tag on to the expedition and they're going to actually act as our kind of food drop people. So one person, one extra person starts with us. And then when we get to the next train, another person comes in with all of the extra food and then the person that started with us takes out all our garbage. Um, and then, so they just swap back and forth. So um, we're gonna have someone here at home uh, doing all the, the food for us and orchestrating the getting it to the train station. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have like a media person who's going to be posting for us online so that you can follow the journey. And um, yeah, it's kind of been a, a, a lifelong dream to to cross Ontario like when you just look at the map of Ontario it's just such a a clean connection yeah. um, and it's a very historical route as well so that's pretty uh, I, I can't wait to follow exciting. that adventure that that's gonna be pretty how, how do you how do you juggle the business with that though because you 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 make all kinds of products that uh which is your part of your business I know I know the travel part mm -hmm. is part of the business as well but how, how do you juggle mm -hmm. the, the the production of products and stuff like that for this or not for this, but for retail. Yeah, well, we're hoping to have some help uh, to sort of do some trickle orders throughout the winter. Um, and, but otherwise we're basically just going to say like, get your orders in now because we're gone, um, you know, as of January. So um, yeah, for anyone that's watching now, if you're thinking about gearing up for winter with any of our our DIY kits or gear. Um, yeah, order early because we're, yeah, as of December, yeah, like basically, uh, you know, full on expedition planning mode. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think Dennis maybe froze. I don't know if you can still hear me or not. <laughs> so you guys like stuff <laughs> um but yeah i will mention that we are also having some big changes in the future that we're really excited about can't say quite yet but um as far as our other expeditions go we run trips from one to three weeks in length that are for everyone and if you um like we can't have you this coming winter, but for uh, winter 2022 or three, I guess, um, we're gonna be jumping right back into um, our regular season. So make sure that you follow us along and then we'll release our schedule for the next winter as soon as possible. Um, and we're also starting to run summer trips as well. So because of our, uh, or my experience with Alone, it's a survival program and I lasted uh, 80 days on Great Slave Lake. You still there? You done it? You there? I apologize. You know what? There we go. I, I know somebody in the basement that's probably going to be chuckling at me right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, the internet. The internet. Uh, anyway, oh, I'm listen. sorry about that, everybody. Thanks for carrying the show, Kylan. Yeah, I just kept talking. Um, I was just saying that... Um, because of my time on alone, I started offering um, like some summer programs and one of them coming up is a wilderness survival course that's eight days. And it's it's based kind of off, loosely off of the show where you have rations and 10 M's and then we, you know, build shelters and primitive, you know, fishing lures and that kind of thing to try and provide for ourselves. Um, and so we have, I actually have one spot left, um, that I'm hoping to fill. So if anyone here, uh, feels like coming along and, um, yeah, surviving with me and a good group of people, then, uh, yeah, give me an email or sign up on our website. That's pretty cool. So I have, I have to ask with all, all your products that you guys produce, you, you do polk sleds and all these types of things. What, what's your, what's your biggest seller? Are you in like the mitts, moccasins, or? The, um, 
the anoraks are probably uh one of our top sellers but like our our we kind of have like five core or six core products um the moccasins the mittens the anoraks the toboggans and the snowshoes and they all um you know they're all pretty equal because if someone is is gearing up for the winter you know it's not uncommon for someone to buy an anorak and then you know at the same time get a moccasin kit mitten kit that kind of thing um mm. or they'll get one product be really happy with it and then come back and you know continue outfitting themselves with our with our gear so um but the anoraks seem to be uh, a popular item i think especially from alone from seeing it on tv um yeah i think that has helped a lot and a lot of our customers are now like it's we can see it um it, the, a huge increase from uh, people from the states because um, season seven is now on Netflix in the yeah. U.S. So um, that's been yeah I've been seeing like as like every other orders from the U.S. like um, so that's all, well that's good <laughs> say getting busy is good right oh so for it, sure yeah we got, we got about another minute left here just uh, really quickly uh, on alone. Um, are you, do you, are you still in contact with uh, many of the other participants? I know you were doing a, a weekly uh, stream there on Instagram with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we stay in contact on Instagram for sure. Um, and we have a group text that we kind of, um, you know, update each other uh, as well on that. And it's kind of nice. There's a Facebook group for all, like all eight seasons of Alone. Um, so everyone who's been on the show is a part of that group. And so there's some banter and support going on in, in that group, which is really nice to see. And, um, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, you know what? It's a pleasure following uh, you and Dave, and I, I, I like it when you guys post your videos, so keep posting them there on YouTube. Uh, I do have a link down to your YouTube channel uh, to anybody that's not familiar with Lure of the North or Kylan and uh, Dave and what they do up there with Lure of the North. Uh, by all means, check out their channel. Um, your website address is? Uh, Lureofthenorth.com. There you go. If, you, if you're looking for some really good quality uh gear um and, and it's uh, the thing i like about it is loft, lot, a lot of it is stuff you craft yourself you send them to kits good instructions and off the races they're, they are pretty much right so yep good yeah, stuff exactly. kylan thanks very much for uh agreeing to join up i know you're a busy girl say hi to dave mm -hmm. for me and uh mm -hmm. hopefully stick around in the green room and um if i don't see you over the summertime hopefully i'll hear from you before you go on that huge adventure so <laughs> all right have fun yeah, planning that. thanks no kylan Thank you. Cheers. All righty. So there we go. Get up to date with uh, with Kylan a bit. I apologize for the internet issues. Uh, for anybody that follows the show frequently, you know that uh, I probably have the worst city internet ever. And yes, I am hard connected. So uh, that happens and it happens from time to time, but it does. Sometimes it gets better throughout the night and I'm hoping that's the case right now. Anyways, moving on to our, our second guest or past guest from this season. Uh, our next guest has been on Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show a couple times, uh, once in season one and again in episode 10 of season two. So you can check that out. It's a very entertaining show. Uh, many of you know him as that funny hammock camping guy. Uh, welcome to the live stream, our good friend Suge. Suge, how you doing? Well, I don't think there's anything funny about hammocks. I think that hammocks are a very serious business, Dennis, and there's no jocularity at all to me or to hammock hanging. None at all. I'm glad I had you on this thing up right quick. Hang on a second. Wow. Oh, there we go. The show's just heated right up. See, I'm an American. I got to do something to show these Canadians. All right, now I'm back to myself. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm glad I had you on the show early. So early. Oh, there we go. I knew I'd get one out of you. So what's new, man? I, I hear you. Uh, you just recently went on a your, a solo canoe trip. I I did, and I'm you know I'm still it's still lingering on me. I'm sitting out here with all my gear kind of spread out still because I had to get home and do some things, but get caught up, you know, get the videos made, you know, just all the stuff that happens when you get home, particularly when you make videos and just catch up with the world. But, you know, I got to thank all of you guys because being on your podcast before 
and just watching Canadian canoe videos during the pandemic just got me pumped and I've spouted it out to the world that I'm going to do it. So I did it and I absolutely loved it. That's all right. So where, where'd you go? I was up in the Boundary Waters and I did a, um, I went to some smaller lakes just because it was my first solo and only my second canoe trip. So, and, and also these are less populated lakes, you know, they're not the popular spots. And I had a good, you know, mile long portage going in and it was just, uh, I, I studied up, I borrowed my neighbor's canoe and really worked in my J stroke. And, you know, I wanted to do it by canoe and I wanted to do it with a paddle. And a buddy of mine up in Grand Marais, Joe Fredericks, thank you, Joe, loaned me his um, 15 and a half foot Winona Royal X canoe. It felt light to me. Maybe it was 35 pounds, 30, 40. I don't really know. Doesn't really matter. It's just pop it up there and walk with a canoe hat on. And I've already got a, yeah, I've already got another trip planned doing it by canoe because it was just a new perspective for me. Wow. And, and no doubt you slept in a hammock while you were on your trip. I did. I slept in my hammock every night and, uh, you know, just being out there alone because I'm, I'm kind of an external person when I'm around people, I'm all over the place, even though I'm, I'm pretty quiet and introverted on my own, you know, to be able to be out there and just focus solo was, was really good for me and following the map and having my compass there. And just like I was saying to you earlier in the, earlier in the uh, green room, <laughs> just, just, you know, when you just nail those portages, when you just paddle right up to the right spot, that that's just so much fun, you know. Loved that's it. Cool. So how, how long did it take you to plan this trip? It's funny. I, I can't believe I'm talking to you about canoeing rather than talking to you about hammock camping. Oh, I, I'm all canoe now, man. I can't wait till I can get my own. Hopefully I can buy one from an outfitter at the end of the season. But there, people are snapping them up down here in the States. There's nothing available. So here. Yeah, when Joe loaned me the solo and it had the built-in yoke, so I didn't have to, you know, screw the yoke in every time. It just saved a step. And, um, you know, it was uh, the thing I was saying on the video was when you're backpacking and you come to a lake, unless you build a log raft, you can't yeah. get on it. But with canoeing, you know, I felt like I got some walking on the portages. And uh, I'm going to say portage because it's a Canadian thing. Uh, and I noticed on the video, half the time I say portage. And half the time you say portage. And, um, you know, you, so you get a little short walk and, and be in the woods and then you just come to your next lake and all these lakes have a different character. And, you know, my first day it was raining. So it was nice, you know, first day I'm in the wind and rain and that put a good challenge. And I got to a camp and kind of stayed for the whole next day because it was super windy and I wanted to uh, mess with my load a little bit. I needed to balance it out for the portaging. I, just didn't have that quite right. And then the next day I did uh, six portages and really got out to Omega Lake. And then I was just able to kind of take it a little bit easy coming back out to my uh, same lake, Morgan Lake, with the uh, with the mile long portage. And, you know, it's just still it's still hanging on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see a lot of people here in the comments saying, yes, another canoe convert. So you're hooked. You're hooked. I am hooked. Yeah, I, I really definitely am hooked because I, I do the foot trails in the boundary waters a lot. And there's only so many. Yeah. Um, you know, the snowbank and the disappointment loop and the old pines and the Kekakabic and the Sioux Hustler and the Angleworm. And I've done these over and over. And I love those lakes and I love that area. But I just wanted to see different parts of it. And mm -hmm. now I feel like I'm understanding where these routes are and where the put in points are and kind of how it works. Still have a lot to learn. But I was really proud of myself that I practiced paddling. I bought a paddle and I practiced a lot. And the J-stroke was great. And, of course, people were telling me to use a kayak paddle. You know how everybody loves to tell you what they think you should do? Yeah. I wanted the pure canoe single paddle experience. You know, that's what I was really after, to sort of feel slightly old school out there and figure if I can nail that and do it alone for five days, which, you know, it wasn't anything, but we had a lot of wind. So it really taught me a lot about playing that wind and cutting into it right. And then realizing you can't really stop and take a break because then your canoe's turning around and you're blowing away. <laughs> and in a couple of days where I really had to dig in, you know, and uh, had some white caps out there and found myself hooting and hollering. Yeah. Loved it. Just woo buddy. It was great.
Yeah. So you, you mentioned the first, the first half of your video for this one here is out now, right? Uh, did you have at any time, uh, any, any of the portages where you said, what the heck am I doing here? You well, know, carrying this canoe or, you know, a lot of them other than the first one weren't really that long. It, you know, 90 rods. And so I would just do a little double carry. You know, once I got out there, I said, the heck with this single portage. I'll just run my pack down there and my paddle and my life jacket, just go back and get the other stuff. Cause I needed to, to walk because sitting in that canoe with your legs kind of taking me a little while to figure out where to put my legs. Do I want them straight out? Do I want them crossed? I tried the kneeling thing that, that just hurt my old circus knees. Um, and I, some of the portages, you're just going, did they just put all these rocks here on the <laughs> entrance and everything just to make it interesting? But my observation was I would take my pack over first. And, you know, you're walking across these rocks. You just got out of the canoe. They're all wet from the rain. And I was thinking, man, how am I going to carry this canoe? But by the time you have that canoe on your head, some sort of magic focus kicks in, you know, and you've already stepped on the weird rocks. And it just it just mm -hmm. becomes natural and intuitive where to step and and then get there and drop it in the water. I'd always look and go, I can kind of step in here. And a few of them were kind of crazy with the rocks. And then you realize, oh, yeah, you're pretty much wet from mid thigh uh, down in canoeing. There's there's no dry foot. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot of things. And, you know, for somebody that backpacks a lot, it's just a new perspective, something new to do. It, it added some excitement. It was like when I brought the, the hammock into my backpacking routine it just gave me something new to mess with and just sort of heighten the experience a little bit that's awesome well you know what you you mentioned a bunch of times that you liked watching you know the joe robinettes and the uh jim bairds and you know a bunch of other paddlers we got a great lot of great paddlers here on the show tonight but you know what it's great to see that you've been inspired and you're giving it a try and that you're actually enjoying it so that's oh, great. Yeah. And, and you know it was funny i was when I was packing as a backpacker, you get really concerned about your pack weight. And then I kept thinking, I'm not really carrying it all day, like walking, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's a little something different to wrap your head around. And I had been on a canoe trip before with, um, I think 2014 and it was me and strung out in his canoe and Alex, another friend took a kayak, but I was just the bow man. He just told me, just keep digging. I didn't have to do any map reading portage finding. I was just paddle and carry the canoe. So you were the muscle. <laughs> it was just kind of fun to be, I was to be kind of brainless on this trip. So yeah. being solo, you realize, oh, it's all up to me as far as this. And, and that was fun. You know, it's like really nice to, I use my compass so much more than I do when I backpack. Yeah. You know, wow. just having it in there with the map and just knowing your direction and you know, you go, okay, I got to kind of bear a little bit uh, northwest down this cove. That's where the portage should be. And then I'd be looking in the woods going, I don't see it, man. And then suddenly it just appears. Hmm. Cool. Well, well you know what? We're uh, about out of time here, Shug. All right, man. Man, I could talk to you forever. Uh, you know what? Thanks for coming on the show tonight. But you know what? Really quickly, what can people expect out of Shug over the next couple months? Well, I got another canoe trip plan with Danny, the owner of... Uh, superior um hammocks superior gear hammocks and he contacted me after this and said we should go in july i said man i'm ready he's got a canoe and just the just the usual stuff i put out videos when i do something or have something to say otherwise i don't put them out just to you know chalk up time so nothing nothing new i'm retired now so as soon as as soon as i'm done here i'm just going to go back to staring at the wall and mouth breathing <laughs> That's what I do most of the time. I do most of the time. Uh, you always make me feel so good when I have you on the show. Shug, hopefully you'll be back on again. You know what? I'm going to let you close yourself out here. All right. All secure in Sector 7. Woo, buddy! <laughs> Thanks, man. On that one. <laughs> we'll talk later. Hopefully you All stick right. around for the green All room. Right. Uh, you stay safe, my friend. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Oh, yeah. You know what? If, if you're not laughing right now or you ever got a smile on your face, you're not watching the right show. So, Shug, always an entertaining person, you know what? And uh, always uh, a great guest to have on the show. And I'm sure, heck, man, I think the next show we have Shug on, we'll be talking about canoeing and not hammock camping. So that's cool. Uh, 
Our next guest uh, was certainly a fan favorite back on episode 16 of season two here. Uh, his very polished videos and paddling adventures all around Ontario uh, keep people pretty entertained. Um, please welcome to the live stream tonight, Mr. Jason Irwin from Tumbleholm. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good. I feel, I feel like I've reached the pinnacle of my career because I just, I'm coming on after Shug, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. You, you got a woo, buddy? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. You know, I'm kind of watched him on and off for years and years and years and you know being a hammock guy forever and then to hear him talk about canoeing now because i always thought this this dude would love canoeing you know if he could get out there and put yeah. on more kilometers than he than he normally does on foot anyway just yeah. pretty awesome having him on the show so what have you been up to these days i haven't uh, i haven't talked to you too much since uh you're on the show um, yeah i sorry i haven't been uh, i i part of the show as much as I sort of wanted to be after being on the show last time. Uh, just whatever, life busy, you know, work. And unfortunately, I, I, I don't do canoeing and tripping and video making as my full-time gig. You know, I have a, a, another job as well as a lot of a lot of folks do. But um, I got quite a few trips planned this year. Going to head out with the kids a couple times this summer and uh, definitely do some fall trips. Uh, got a couple of those planned, maybe a couple of longer ones. Um, I'm still pecking away on this big, long French river love letter film, whatever you want to call it. So, and that's coming along quite nice. So the, when it's, yeah, you were working on that last time we spoke, weren't <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah. That's yeah. the story of my life, you know, as everybody knows, or anybody knows the, the very few people that follow me know, yeah. I, I just take forever to make videos, but I'm fine with that. You know, that's cool. I just, I just can't help myself, but take forever to kind of put them together and string together a nice thread if you will and uh so that one's it's it's close you know it's about 80 percent done maybe 75 percent done uh and yeah i got a new camera which is kind of bringing to life some of my old lenses so i'm going to start getting back into photography a little more and and that's going to be something i concentrate on some of the trips coming up over the next little while and yeah i wish i had half the great stories that all your guests uh have to tell tonight but well, I'm your not. your your guests or your your guests your your uh, your stories are stories of the past now, right? But that doesn't <laughs> take away anything from from the quality of your videos. Like uh, that's the one thing that when you're on the show, we spoke a lot of like you know the quality, and because you're in the industry, you you have that ability to produce good. Uh, aside from somebody like myself, that's like you know cut 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 yeah. cut type of thing, right? Stick to cuts, no dissolves. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I have the hardest time doing that. Trying, yeah, I, know. I know. For some reason, I I, I know cuts are best, but yeah. some reason I always do these dissolves, and I hate it. Right? Yeah, it's it's yeah, whatever. It's a thing. Yeah. yeah. So, do do you have any uh, any trips planned for uh, the summer season here at all? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, just a couple a couple with the kids. You know, the kids are at a my I'm twelve and fifteen, so. You know, there. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring out two canoes this time. We won't all be stuck in one canoe because they can, you know, handle a canoe by themselves now. So that's kind of cool. And and so yeah, a couple of a couple of trips with the kids. And like I say, I'm really looking forward to the fall. And uh, I've cut, sort of planned my chunks of time off around uh, nights when it's a new moon, so there won't be that light pollution from the damn moon. Yeah. You know, I'm just I'm looking forward to doing some some. Uh, night photography and stuff and like I said I kind of got a new camera and it's brought my whole lens kit uh, took it to another level so I'm pretty excited about getting out there with uh with that and uh yeah you know whatever just kind of doing my thing it's cool it's cool watching people that, that really have a, uh, an appreciation for their camera gear and stuff like that eh? because they get all uh, Chris Prouse is like that too eh? yeah. she gets a new piece of equipment she's all jacked right up about it eh? somebody yeah. like me it's like it's GoPro <laughs> You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know so it's funny. I get a lot of questions about you know what what's your gear and da 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 da. And I've got uh, well, actually you can see it here. I've got uh, a couple of people asking, "What's the new camera you got?" I got an R6, Canon R6. But of course, I have a whole slew of Canon lenses, and this new body, it's just it's pretty amazing. What little I've done with it so far, it's pretty amazing how it's kind of really brought a lot of the existing glass that I have more to life than some of the the bodies I had before. But to your point about GoPros, and maybe this will kind of answer a whole bunch of questions from a lot of people. A lot of people are like, ah, oh, what's the camera you use? I'm like, dude, I just use a GoPro. Mm -hmm. I, they're just ridiculously good. You know, I mean, I, there's a lot of little action cams that are great, but the GoPro is the one I use. And, I, you know, with the stabilization and everything, 
it's a game changer. Yeah. You know, the audio is pretty good and the picture's amazing and you can shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second. So you can have slow-mo, you can punch in, you know, if you're, if you're putting all your stuff on YouTube at 1080, you know, but you shoot at 4K, that allows you to kind of push in on images and still have it be high res. And oh, anyway, I didn't know I just, that. Thanks. You just you just learned me something. Yeah, yeah. You know, the <laughs> thing with the GoPro is just uh, two things. I would say, don't shoot, you know, super wide or crazy wide. You know, just keep it on linear, which stops you getting from that weird, you know, horizon warping. So it just makes it a lot more watchable, essentially. And, you know, with the GoPro, it's just all about where you mount it. And now you can kind of mount it anywhere because you can, you know, you can talk to it. You can start it and stop it with your voice. So it's like, yeah. that's why I mount it on a pole way up high behind me or in front of me or wherever, you know, you can, you can shout commands to it. And I don't know. So yeah, for, if for, anybody for, wants to see that effect, watch his uh, Spanish river trip because you, you use the pole a lot there to, to get them shots over you and, that's, yeah. uh, it made, made for some pretty cool stuff. I, I actually just got back last night at midnight from Tomogamy for a four-day trip. Nice. And uh, I brought my DSLR. I brought my drone. I had all kinds of camera equipment, battery. You know what I used for the four days because the weather was so yep. crap? <laughs> like yeah. GoPro. And that was yeah. it. And it's in I, your car I carried a tripod. Pocket. Didn't come out of the pack. Yeah. You know, the GoPro's in your pocket, and you can just go... Turn it on, and it looks like it's on a tripod the moment you turn it on. It's just, yeah. it's crazy, you know. Yeah. I was saying before, you know, I, I, I had a hard time watching some of like the Baird videos, you know, Jim Baird, because he's just kind of, you know, he's more into the trip and doesn't give it a hoot about the camera and shit. But as soon as you put the GoPro on, you know, it just because it's kind of steadying everything. It's like, bam, everything's more watchable. And uh, yeah, I don't know, just it's a pretty, pretty slick piece of kit. Yeah. So, so not to put the pressure on you, but when can we expect that uh, French River video to come out? I probably I need the pressure. <laughs> come on, people in the in the chat, tell them yeah. we want to see some more videos, man. Yeah, I know it's it's crazy. I'm I'm pretty excited about this one. It's going to be about probably two hours long, and it's it's basically a French River four day October October late September trip. Um, but then I kind of interspersed it or interjected uh footage from trips from like 18 years ago 20 years ago five years ago you know and it's just sort of an overlook on over overlook is that a word it's a it's mm -hmm. an overview on what it's like to trip on the french and like i say in the video it's kind of become my favorite place to trip not that i have a very expansive uh catalog of places i've been but that place in particular, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the light or the topography or all of it or it's past, but it's just a fantastic place to canoe, kayak, trip in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have I have to say, because you, you just reminded me of uh the best intro video that I ever had for a guest that's gonna be on the show. And I have to say that was the one that you did with so many birds <laughs> and you Hun, yeah. is new legend a word? New legend is that? Yeah. And I didn't even include all the bears. You know, I missed one. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, I yeah. think about it right. Yeah, yeah. I, I apologize to her actually. Oh, really? <laughs> on, on Instagram, yeah. Oh man, that's great. So, really quick, last quick question: Where, where are you, you and the family going? Are you just like an Algonquin trip, or are you heading somewhere north more? You know, I don't know. I, I have a feeling this year is going to be completely bananas in Algonquin. It always is anyway, but this year in particular, people are really itching yeah. to get out, so it's probably going to be really busy. Um, French River, you don't have to book particularly, uh, you know, uh, lakes or anything. And, you know, if you're really stuck in the French River, the beauty of that place is there's so many vast areas of flat flowing rock. You can almost camp anywhere. You're not supposed mm -hmm. to, but... So I, I have a feeling we'll go back to the French River just because it's a, a place that we'd like to go. And sometimes I go with my buddy uh, Scott and his kids and, and they love to go there too. And it's, you know, for swimming and just general fun, family fun. Yeah. French River is a pretty good spot. So so I guess it's safe to say you're going back to the French River so that you don't have to put out your French River video yet because you got to get a few more shots <laughs> yeah. to fill in the voids, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, part of the reason I've been holding off is I want to get some like, establishing shots with my drone right but man the more i read about drones and flying them in the parks and and just some of the new rules that are coming down the pipe like in the states they've just brought in some really heavy-handed rules about about flying your drone like if you make money at all in any way from flying your drone 
you have to have the license. Da, 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 da. There's all these, you know, they're really, really clamping down on it. So I don't know, maybe I don't need it, but I would say I'm probably about, I would guess about a month out from uh, outputting this new bid. Cool. I'm yeah. looking forward to it as I'm sure uh, from cool. what I'm reading in the chat, everybody's looking forward to it and they say they enjoy your videos. Jason, thanks very much for uh, coming on to uh, the season finale of Canoe thanks, Outdoor Dennis. Adventure Show. Yeah, uh, I'd like to say just uh, thanks to all the people who kind of came before me and the people who are coming later. I'm a I'm a part-time two or three trip camper guy and a lot of these people doing it, you know, as their life gig and, and doing it all the time. And I super appreciate what they're doing. There you go. For anybody that's not familiar with Jason Irwin Tumblehome, check him out. His uh, link to his YouTube channel is in the description below. Jason, you take care. Stay safe out there and I uh, hope to run into you someday. Yeah. Thanks, Dennis. And hopefully it's not my front bumper and your back bumper, right, son? <laughs> yeah. In the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, buddy. You take care. All right. See ya. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Like I say, to anybody that hasn't checked out Jason's, uh, his editing skill, his camera skills, and actually his narration in his videos is, uh, is really well. And if you want, want something that you want a good chuckle about, look in his library. I'm pretty sure he's probably got it on his library there. The intro that he did when he was a guest on the show, he did a little advertisement commercial. It's about 30 seconds long. And it was, uh, when I see it, man, I, I it warmed my heart and made me laugh at the same time because it was it was it was that good. So, by all means, check it out. Uh, let's see here, where are we? Uh, because we one of our guests uh, hasn't popped into the green room yet, so we're we're kind of ahead of schedule, but we're we're not. So we're just going to maintain on. Um, our next guest uh, that we're going to bring up here is uh, a, somebody whose show that I was on. He uh, he had me on a guest as a guest on his show. We kind of did a, a tit for tat type of thing, right? Because we both have uh, similar programs. He has a podcast and a live stream. I have the live stream and they're both kind of focused on this whole outdoor community. Uh, let's see here. He was on on episode, I believe, 21. And uh, his show is down in the U.S. and it's called The Camping Show, and it airs every Wednesday evening on YouTube on the YouTube channel CW Gets Outdoors. I'd like to welcome to the live stream, Mr. CW Gets. Good evening from Chicago, Dennis. And Chico. there's that radio voice, man. Yeah, the radio. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, you had. I have some bad news for you, man. Uh oh. Uh, you had a turkey in your basement, and um, I pretty much all but killed that turkey. I'm really sorry about that. Oh. But so you're in a good mood tonight. <laughs> well, you know, it's like a night off for me. And so when I get a night off, I like to uh, celebrate that, you know, um, isn't isn't very often you get to. And as you know that you get the busy schedule you're doing, you're wearing many hats. Um, yeah. You know, you, when you get it, when you get some time to yourself, that's a cause to celebrate, isn't it? I mean, you know, it is, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Hey, man, I'm digging the shirt you got on tonight. Hey, you know what? Thank you. I Thank you for reminding me. I want to thank you for this. Uh, I'm telling you, it's the Canoe Hound Adventure Wear, and I'm all about that. In fact, I got a hat, but I didn't know how that was going to fit with my head. But this is cool. This is an awesome hat. And this isn't some cheese whiz, uh, you know, sticker on. This is uh, embroidered. I mean, you can see that. It's a, it's a nice hat, pal. Thank you. That's a fifty dollars hat if there ever was one. I'm telling yeah, you, no, nothing halfway about it, man. If I sold them for fifty dollars U.S., I, I think right now, well, we you're one of I think two guests tonight that are from the U.S. If I sold it for fifty bucks American, I could retire. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what is that? Uh, uh, fifty bucks. Fifty bucks is American. Is equivalent to what in Canada? About four thousand dollars. <laughs> <It's just, it's laughs> Hell yeah, you get uh, you get an airstream and cruise around, man. Take the family. I get American money. I can't use it right now, anyways. Can't cross well, the border yet. So you know, and, and and you know, Johnny and Colleen sent me a shirt too. And uh, wild geography, you know, thank God you people send me clothes because I wouldn't have anything to wear. I mean, my oh, laundry oh still a week and a half out, and I, yeah. So I appreciate that, everyone. Thanks Bro for broadcasting from the nudist colony. Welcome to the camping show with CW. You know, you never know. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, tell me what's going on with your show these days. Uh, I know mm -hmm. a lot of you've, uh, you've had a lot of interesting guests on, including somebody who's been on my show quite a bit lately there, Mr. Uh, you know who? Cliff. What do we call him? Uncle Cliff. Uncle Cliff. But no, we uh, <laughs> we won't say, say the name that I, I mentioned to you uh, in private. But. Oh, <laughs> 
I'm going to do Sergeant let's Schultz. Just say, no nothing. <laughs> let's just say Cliff gets around. He's been on my show a bunch of times. He's been on your show a bunch of times. Tell you something. When, when I am his age, and I won't say it, um, I am be, going to be happy just to be able to make it to the refrigerator to grab a beer. And so yeah. whatever he does beyond that, I mean, good for him. I mean, kudos to you, Cliff. Absolutely. Yeah, um, for sure. If I even live that long. You know, I don't know. You never know how that is, right? Um, but yeah, he's a phenomenal guy, and and absolutely every bit of a legend. And uh, I really enjoy having him on the show. I, I always look forward to it. You know, there, sometimes you know when you're you're you kind of have to maybe sometimes uh, pull the show along a little bit. I'd never have to worry. Cliff is man, we got it. It's a smooth rolling show, and never uh, never any dead air or as we say or. Uh, uh, boring moment. So I, I really enjoy having him on. And uh, yeah, um, I, I got some big news. I got oh, a little bit of cool. news here. Yeah. Um, I went all the way to Morocco. Uh, as you know, I had a co-host, uh, Jesse Freed. And uh, Jesse, really, her schedule got kind of crazy with COVID and everything um, this past winter. And, um, and and she had about, she, you know, doing both at once is really tough for her. And um and now she's got some other things going on. So I, I have been kind of, uh, you know, sort of looking for another co-host. And lo and behold, in Morocco, I found this this lady to uh, that that I believe will fill fill the shoes very well. Um, next Wednesday, she will be joining me on. Uh, I believe it's next Wednesday on the camping show. Uh, Miss Willow Munson, and she is a um, Duluth. Uh, Minnesota native, and she is over in Morocco, I believe, for another couple of weeks, and then she's going to be in Spain, I think, uh, for a couple of weeks after that. So, um, so yeah, I'm really excited about having her on the show, and um, I think you guys will love her. So, that's mm-hmm. my big, my big announcement. Um, yeah. So, other than that, I mean, as and I may have told you this, but. Earlier in the year, when we thought that maybe uh, it might be possible to travel to places like uh, Brazil, I had a uh, uh, a trip lined up, a short little trip, but a, a trip nonetheless, um, to paddle a portion of the Amazon River. And uh, I had a friend in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, who was going with me, and we couldn't make that happen because of the whole uh, COVID thing and, and the, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the, not quarantine, but... Uh, we couldn't do that. It couldn't happen. Right. So now I've just got a bunch of little things planned for the summer, but I do have a trip with some uh, high school buddies. Um, we're going to do the current river in October. So there's my uh, there's my little bit of uh, a travel trip for this year. Going to be very light, you know. Cool. So not a lot of exciting stuff, but your guests have some cool stories, man. And they got some cool stuff, really. <laughs> I, I, I'm blessed. I have honestly had some fantastic guests over the entire season, uh, your, yourself included. Um, right. and, and you know what? The the train is just picking up speed going down that hill right now, right? We're, uh, like yeah. I say, next season, we're, uh, we're, we're ramping up for uh, a nice season three. And it's good to have things booked already in the season three, as you would know yourself as a host Absolutely. of uh, this type of thing, right? Absolutely. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have some of the, the regular favorites on and uh, some of the new up and comers. And like I said earlier, uh, a couple of these people that I've been after for a couple of years to to try and get on the show. And that's uh, when you when you can land them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Though? Like, I, I won't, I, I'm trying to search for the right word because I, I Every every guest I have on is equally important to me, and you know sure. it's it's Sorry. you know it's a it's a blessing, and you know how and you've probably done this too in in your your radio career, your your podcast career, is you gravitate towards the people that you have a real interest for because you follow them yourself wholeheartedly, right? You do, and and yeah. there's a little different sort of uh yeah, there's a little different sort of uh, uh, underlying sort of gravitation as you as you described it and uh and, and they're usually interestingly enough they're usually the a uh, little more difficult to uh, get a hold of or uh land as a, you know as i said so yeah i mean it's it, it's a little special when you get the people that you you know have really you've been influenced by and that sort of thing absolutely absolutely uh you know and and you know it's kind of uh, funny you should mention that i actually um uh, um, I'm working on my schedule here for the uh, fall 
Um, and I'll just I'll tell you a couple of things we got coming on if I still have, uh, yeah score. yeah you, I can give you about another minute here then we're gonna move on to the swipe yeah. away, I think. yeah we've got uh, we've got a whitewater boating um, episode um, with uh, Dan Bowers from Rutabaga Paddle Sports in Madison and and uh, Colin uh, Kemp from Jackson Kayak. Uh, we've got um, Michael Peake, which is a retired Canadian photojournalist. Uh, he's going to be talking about uh, paddling Canada's historic rivers. Uh, we've got a big tribute to Cliff Jacobson, our buddy Cliff. Um, that's going to be July 21st and uh, kind of a star-studded uh, uh, panel there for that. Kevin Callan will be there, Michael Peake, uh, Darlene Patterson, Jerry Vandiver, Jim Mandel, and Jesse Free is going to pop into that show. Awesome. And I've got a special guest. That's uh, TBA. Uh, then we've got the owner of uh, Infinity SUP is going to be on in July, as well as uh, Jean Francois Fran Francois uh, Gerard. He's a French Canadian wilderness guide. Um, we've got Camper Christina, who's going to be on in August, also, and um, Bob Zavril, the owner of Zavril Racing Paddles, will also be on. And um, all about canoes is um, Bear Paulson. We're going to have him on from North Star Canoes. So, uh, well, so, so yeah, that's a that's a pretty long list of uh, futuristic guests, right? Like <laughs> or, it, guests into the future. That, that's good. Sometimes sometimes on week to week, eh? It's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it's, I, I know I know this is a full time gig for you, whereas me, I, I have another day job that this well, really interferes with. But uh, I love doing this. this is awesome. I have no idea how you do everything you do, sir. I mean, really. I sometimes I don't know either. I have a very yeah. patient wife. Uh, you've me. met Cheryl uh, through this stuff here before, and uh, yeah, for sure. So, really quickly, uh, let people know where they can find you, how they can find your podcast and your show, uh, times, dates, blah blah blah. Yes, sir. Uh, you can go on CW Gets at CW G O E T Z Outdoors on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, on my Instagram, I have a uh, link tree in the bio where you can uh, click on any of those links. There's a couple links there for the uh, the live stream, and there's also a link for the radio show, and uh, which actually runs simultaneously, and then the podcasts, which are on iHeartRadio. So. That's awesome, funny. man. Well, you know what? Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I check out your shows all the time. I, I'm not one to leave comments all the time because I watch YouTube on my TV all the time and I don't know how to keep commenting <laughs> on there. But I'm with you, you sir. Know, I'm with I'm you. I'm one of them guys. I lurk in I lurk in the shadows. Eh? <laughs> it comes to people's live streams and stuff. You're one of those shadow guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm watching, but I ain't like saying you, anything. Right? So <laughs> hey, I want to thank you for the invite. This is a lot of fun, and you got some great guests on here, some really cool people. So thanks, CW. It means a lot coming from you. Uh, I appreciate everything that you've done and uh appreciate the friendship you and I have made. Uh, uh, since you you were on the show last time, so likewise, sir. Thank you so much. Likewise, yeah. absolutely. So cool. Well, you stay safe and healthy down there. I'm sure we will talk. Uh, you know, through Facebook or whatever it is, we always look for the cheaper way to communicate, so we don't have playing those long distance fees. But uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks very much for being on the show, and we will connect sometime soon. Thank you, sir. Sounds great. I enjoy it. Cheers, CW. Cheers. Bye bye. All righty, so CW Gets and the Camping Show. Be sure to check that out on uh, Wednesday nights. There again, link is in the uh, bio or in the description below. Links are in the description to all the YouTube channels and so uh, important social media of all the guests tonight. If you want to check them out uh, at a later time, please be sure to do so because a support, a like, a comment on their videos uh, goes a long way. And by the way, if you hit the, the like button yet down here, it's a little thummy thing that sits down around here. Uh, I'd love to see if I can get a show up over 100 likes. Uh, I'm not sure if I've done it uh, too many times this season. Doesn't cost you a penny. Hit that thumbs up, people. I'd really love to see that happen. Okay, so you know what? Uh we're right on schedule here. I think right now I'm going to set up and we're going to do the swag giveaway and then we will get on with our uh, our first guest after that uh, from Council Tools. Hopefully, uh, he's, it looks like he's been having a little trouble connecting in the basement. We'll get him all that all that uh, all that worked out, and if not, we'll move on to the next person. Anyways, as I mentioned, we have our sponsor up here, Kid Products. They're outdoor adventure supplies, and they are the makers of the Kid Twig Stove and Reflector Oven, products made in Canada, hence the Canadian flag. 
these are uh, quality products that, uh, you know what, they will last you a lifetime in the, uh, in the back country. I've been having a lot of fun with this new reflector oven that they just came out with. Um, you know what, a lot of people might think I'm biased because I've actually become good friends with these guys, uh, so much so that I just got back from a four-day adventure uh, with the president of Kid Products. We went up to Tamagami, did a four-day canoe trip up there. And uh, man, we 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 did some cooking on there. Uh, we made cinnamon rolls in the uh, in the uh, reflector oven. We used a twig stove. We did not bring any fuel for the trip whatsoever. We used a twig stove, and uh, we had a, we we did have some issues because it rained and rained and rained up in Tamagami. And you know what? We we resorted to finding fat wood and burning fat wood. Yeah, we had a lot of residue on the bottom of our pots, but you know what? We had our coffees, we had our teas, we had our hot soups, we had our uh, dehydrated meals and everything else. So we ate well, and they still work. So you can get by in the backcountry with a twig stove. So by all means, check out Kid Products at kidproducts.com and uh, check out some of the neat stuff that they have. So with that being said, let's get in here into uh, tonight's swag giveaway. And we have a lot of great things. First off, our friends, I'm, I'm just going to get this going across the bottom because you're going to need to email your answer to tonight's question to coasprize at gmail.com. You have until Saturday at 11 p.m. to do so. At, time, at that time, we will be drawing uh, multiple winners, multiple winners. Get yourselves into this draw. It doesn't contact, cost you anything. I will not inundate you. I'm back. <laughs> I will not inundate you with any any spam email or anything like that. That's not what it's about. It's just about trying to get some cool swag into your hands. Tonight, our good friends over at uh, Kid Products are have donated a, let's see here, let me get it on screen, a Kid Reflector Oven, as well as two stainless steel folding cutlery sets, uh, a $200 value. That'll be going to a lucky winner uh, of tonight's uh, swag giveaway. We also have, look at that thing. That thing is so cool. They're, they're, they lay down flat. They're easy to, to transport and they are super light. Uh, it's, they're amazing. Uh, we will also be giving away a copy of Backcountry Eats, uh, the book that I had shown you a little while ago. All kinds of information on there on selecting a dehydrator, dehydrating camping meals and food, uh, meal planning, portioning, stoves and fuel, baking and backcountry, and protecting your food from wildlife. So it's a great book. It's a beautiful book, actually. Uh, look at this. this one's actually signed by Kevin. That's cool stuff. So it's a thick book, too. There's all kinds of information. Definitely a great read. Uh, very well put together. Thank you, Kevin Ride, for that. I appreciate my copy. And uh, looking forward to putting one into another hand. And if you want one yourself, you can visit... It was on there, backcountry eats slash or backcountry slash eats.com. Check them out and uh, order your own if you're not the winner. But you know what? Order one, anyways. Give it to a friend. We also have, and let me just uh, really quickly check this out here. Do, 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 do. Uh, we have a coffee mug. Our good friend Shug from uh, Sean Emery. Shug, he's uh, donating a Shug coffee mug that's going to be going to one lucky winner. Uh, Courtesy of Council Tools and Rooster, an upcoming guest here on the show, uh, will be giving away a Flying Fox Woodsman hatchet. Uh, check out the episode that we had with uh, 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 Rooster from Council Tools. It was on axe safety. Fantastic show. You'll learn so much, and you'll learn how to use an axe very safely in the background or in, in uh, you know, when you're in the backcountry. Uh, CW Gets is also donating a t-shirt. Uh, so if you want a chance to win a CW Gets t-shirt, it's a good chance to get in there. And then I myself am giving away three Canoe Hounds Adventures prize packs, which is Hey, guess who's back? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I myself will be giving away a uh, three separate uh, Canoe Hound Adventures prize packages, which is going to consist of a base, a baseball cap, and it's also going to consist. Everybody's laughing down in the basement right now. <laughs> Anyways, a baseball cap. We're going to have some patches, some decals. And a few goodies from our good friends over at Algonquin Outfitters. So, like I say, there's all kinds of swag to give away. You can't win if you don't have a ticket. 
right? So what we're going to do, tonight's question is so simple. There, you, don't even have, you didn't even have to be paying attention tonight. All I want to know is what was your favorite episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show during season two? Just let me know. Uh, I, I'd appreciate that. Helps me uh, for research in the future to see what people are really interested in. But uh, ultimately, what was your favorite episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show during season two? That's great. So, yeah, I will leave this on screen for just a moment. And uh, we will get on with our next guest. Hopefully, our next guest is okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're reg reg uh, good to go. I got a thumbs up. That is awesome. Okay. Let me find my intro, and uh, we will move on to the second half of tonight's uh, grand finale. Uh, from episode number 22 on the topic of backcountry axe safety, we were joined by a true axe lover who wanted to share all kinds of axe safety tips. If you didn't see that show, by all means, go on there, check it out, because we covered everything from different types of axes to how to properly swing an axe, store an axe, sharpen an axe. We, we covered it covered quite a bit on there. Uh, let's see here. He is the admin from a Facebook group called Axe Junkies, and he's an axe designer from Council Tools. Please welcome to the live stream, Craig Roost, but we'll call you Rooster. Sounds good. Dennis, How you doing, buddy? Hey, thanks for having me back. Hey, you know what? I told you I was definitely going to have you back on the show at some time because you, you got the smarts when it comes to these, uh, these sharp implements that uh, we like to use in the backcountry. Thanks. Yeah. No, I uh, I appreciate the confidence and whatever I I can pass forward to your to your audience. That's what I'm here for. Cool, cool. So what what's new these days with Rooster and uh, in the world of council tools and fancy axes? Yeah, well, I don't live as exciting life as a lot of the other um, guests on the show tonight. No, um, I, I I get enjoyment out of uh, doing a lot of tree work on the property. Um, we split a lot of firewood to heat the house in the winter. So I find I get time to spend in the woods, but it's uh, it's more work-based than it is um, being recreational. But that's my right. recreation, I guess we'll call it. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of that. Um, and with that, I get to test out a lot of the um, prototypes or early, early stages of some of the newer tools or tools that are redesigning for console tool. So I get to kind of play and work at the same time, which is fun. That's all right. And you know what? When you're enjoying your job, it, it makes it uh, it makes it that much easier to talk about, right? So, sure, sure. Yeah. One of the processes, I guess, for um, for the tools that we do make, most of them are drop forged. And so for people that aren't familiar with that process, think of um, having two, two separate plates that have the opposite impression of them to make one, almost like a cast, but it's not, okay? And one lays flat on a deck, a uh, steel deck, and the other one is attached to a big steel sled called the hammer. And that sled gets picked up by hydraulics and then dropped. And that's what the drop and drop forging is. And when it drops, those two come together and you have a, basically a piece of steel usually round stock between an inch and a half and two inches by, you know, eight or nine inches long being held by tongs. And as you get that steel in there and it comes down, that force crushes and forces that steel to flow into that die and fill the space that basically creates the shape of the ax. And then everything oh. that's left gets squirted out the sides. And then it's given to somebody who then, punches it on a trim press, kind of like a cookie cutter. And then they pick it up and then grab it and put it in an upsetter, which then punches the eye. And this is all done in one heat. So mm -hmm. when those forging dies wear out after so many impressions or so many units that are passed through that forging die, they get worn and we need to resync them. So they're pretty thick. They're upwards of eight, or eight inches thick sometimes. And what they'll do is they'll resurface the top and make it flat again. And then they'll mill out the shape of that whatever tool or like say an ax, okay? And then when they do that, that gives me an opportunity to then adjust that design, improve it in any way that we can, um, tweak it a little bit. And so that's always a fun process, just taking existing patterns and then changing them a little bit to be a little bit more useful and maybe even a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So that's always, hmm. it's fun. 
That's cool. That, but do do you take do you take dry or like do you go from drawing right to final production type of thing or like you know do you create designs like that as well? Um, sort of. So I I use a rudimentary um, design or a computer program called SketchUp, um, and I I know just enough to be scary, and I used to <laughs> use though that program for my timber framing. Uh, basically, SketchUp is basically building in blocks and stretching those blocks in three dimensions to create. Um, a design or an object. And so what I'll do is I'll actually draw the, a pattern in my SketchUp program, and then I'll give it to my engineer at the plant who's very good at SolidWorks CAD. I mean, it's unbelievable what this guy can do. Uh, shout out to Daniel Butler, by the way. Um, then he'll take my rudimentary drawing of size and weight and that kind of stuff, and he'll draw it in SolidWorks, which then allows me to see um, where the center of gravity is, you know, where the balance points are. Um, it, I can then rotate. You can show me a picture. I can rotate it in three in 360 degrees, you know, three-dimensionally to, to take a look at it. And then once we get back and forth with any changes that we both have, he'll actually make a um, 3D print from that same program, and then he'll send them to me, and then I'll look at it in person. You know, I'll have a, a model of it to scale. And if it's if it's right where we need it, then he'll actually use that same program to CNC and machine out that that uh, pattern into the die. Mm -hmm. So it's that one program can do multiple things, um, which streamlines the process from a uh, production and a um, design, you know, R and D process. It's funny. Earlier, you mentioned that, like you know, when after after they've trimmed the flash off, then they put it into an upsetter to to punch the eye in it. I I used to run an upsetter when I was in the automotive industry, and those were not fun machines. <laughs> I didn't like that one. Sure, <laughs> sure. So for the people that are, are kind of just like, what are they talking about? I'm um, too much better, as opposed to drawing it out when you use a hammer to. To stretch out a piece of steel with a hammer is called drawing, but the upset is to shorten it. And what that upsetter then has basically a punch on the end of it, and it's not really used to upset. It's using to punch the eye. So the eye, the basically a molten slug comes out the bottom of the axe head, and that's what forms the consistent eye that the, then the wood handle ends up going inside of. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yeah. So now you you've uh, graciously donated for tonight's swag giveaway uh, one of the flying fox. Uh, like, yeah, can you yeah. can you tell tell us yeah. a little bit about that axe? Well, um, I'll tell you one now. It's it's so popular that whoever does get this is going to have a uh, a rare thing because right now they are selling so fast that our we we struggle to keep our dealers in stock. Um, mm -hmm. We were you know just like a lot of manufacturers and suppliers. Um, we're we're feeling the the crunch not only from from materials, you know, steel and wood from our side, from our suppliers, but the demand for hand tools and other products, camping gear, all that is just. Most people will say they've never seen it this busy and this even with the inflation that we're seeing, the demand is so high it's unbelievable. So, whoever does get this flying fox is probably going to um, be pretty happy because right now there it's a struggle to find them online anywhere. Um, so it's, it's basically a, it's a really nice camp tool. Um, it's a pound and three quarter head with about a four inch blade. It's got a hardened pole, which means the back of the pole is, is hardened to the point where you don't have to be afraid to use it on steel. Um, either whether it's 10 stakes or you can use it to drive nails, release the hitch on the truck, which I always say, <laughs> you know, cause I've used it that way. You know, if, if the, if the lock on the, on the hitch on that trailer is frozen shut, you have to, and you need to get that trailer off the hitch. Sometimes you got to give it a little attitude adjustment, and sometimes I'll just pull that right out of the out of the truck and it gives a little tap. And I wouldn't want to do that with a, a really high end axe that's not made that way. So that hardened pole does come in handy a lot of times, and it's got a 16 inch handle, and it makes a really good camp tool. The bonus is is that it also qualifies for competitive throwing. So whoever does get it, if they wanted to set up a target in the backyard. They get to uh, split firewood and then have a little throwing <laughs> competition with their buddies. So you, you talk about multi-purpose, right? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So now your uh, council tool access, they're they're available both in Canada and the U.S. Yes. Uh, uh, yep. Yep. There are a number of uh, retailers in Canada. Um, we partner with a distributor called Young and McKenzie, and mm-hmm. they have a number of retailers in, um, I think, in two or three, actually three or four of the provinces up there. So Canadian Outdoor Equipment Company is probably the most um, known one in Ontario, mm-hmm. um, near near Toronto. Um, but there are uh, Kent of Inglewood. Um, there's a couple other more other ones. But uh, if you just get on youngmckenzie.com, um, they will be able to help you find a dealer um, to get you some council access. Right now, do do you find uh, are are there is there anything uh, in the axe industry that is really trending now? Like that that seems to be you know it's making a swing towards a particular style of axe. Well. I'll be honest, the, the throwing has taken everybody by surprise. Um, you know, th- the throwing started pretty much in Canada and then came down the eastern seaboard of the United States and now is marching all the way across the United States. Now, it's not as popular out west it is, but out east and in the Midwest, it's it's pretty popular. Uh, so mm-hmm. that that is one trend that we're seeing. And then Council Tool is dedicated to helping that community, and that's re- one of the reasons that the Flying Fox was developed, was to uh, make a well-balanced axe that can that you can compete with, but it also has the stylings of the vintage heads that a lot of these throwers enjoy throwing. So if you struggle to find a Plum National online without you know paying an arm and a leg or promising to name your next born after somebody. Um, the, the flying fox will is is that axe that um, allows guys to are into the vintage heads or into vintage axes to recognize some of those design elements in the flying fox. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's so that's that's probably the biggest trend that we're seeing right now. And then obviously, obviously the other one is just the overall outdoor uh, market um, is just absolutely crazy right now. I think I lost you. Are you frozen up a little bit right now? <laughs> so one of the things that I ended up doing, I'll just keep talking so, so Dennis, I get Dennis back, um, or he can cut me off, whichever happens first, I guess. Uh, I was actually out to Salt Lake City recently for the Outside Adventure Expo, and that is where uh, a bunch of you know, companies that specialize in um, – Dennis, you there, bud? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I've got uh, you there. Yeah, all right. All right. That's okay. Right. <laughs> That's all right. So I was saying that I was just out to Salt Lake City um, for at the um, Outdoor Adventure Expo, which is a bunch of um, overlanders. So the guys that have outfitted vehicles and trailers, and then a lot of them have rooftop tents that fold down. Yeah. So you basically just you camp wherever you want. You don't really have to have a campsite. But then at the same time, you don't have to drive an entire – SUV or a travel trailer. So it's kind of a, a mix of both worlds. And that that was pretty impressive. Um, I was out there for to uh, help support Forest Tool, who makes a multi-use tool that's built off of um, that's built off an axe. So it's more of like a recovery tool or a multi-purpose digging with a shovel, a cloud blade, uh, an a-, a matic pick. And uh, so check out the Max tool by Forest Tool, and they uh, they have a pretty cool tool that maybe snipers or your paddlers may be interested in having in a, in a vehicle for themselves. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's a good carry-all. So um, what, one last question here before we uh, move on to our next guest. I, I, this is really hard to sum up, but number one safety tip for using an ax. Well, if, if one thing that's going to stop a person from getting hurt, Um, yeah, don't be intimidated and respect, respect the fact that it's basically a blade on a stick. I mean, mm-hmm. other guys will say, well, you have to keep your feet away and you got to make sure you're targeting well. Most accidents happen because either you're rushing or you're not, you're not taking the steps needed to have an accurate strike. If you strike the wood every time, you never hurt anybody. So that's, mm-hmm. to me, that's just making sure that you're not intimidated you're using an axe that's the right size for you and just, you know, be accurate, you know, work on your accuracy and, and also practice 
when it's not important. You know, being out in the bush with an ax and you're not used to using it, that's a safety hazard. So practice mm -hmm. at home, get used to it, get used to the length, what it can do, and practice when it's not important so that when you do need it, you're you're good to go. I'm not that's sure awesome. if I answered the question that, but yeah, no, no, no right. You know what? That's why I say I knew it was gonna be hard to summarize something like right. that. Number one safety tip for an axe, right? When there's so right. many things that you have to take into consideration. And mm -hmm. one one last thing, I know your your son retails or deals deals in axes and axe handles yeah. and stuff like that. Give him a plug. Yeah, yeah it's uh whiskeyrivertrading.com. He's one of our dealers for council tool. And uh, if you can't find something that's uh, listed but it's out of stock, you know, sign up for his newsletter um, on his website. And the people that uh, are on the newsletter get first, basically first get dibs on whatever he does get in when he gets it in. He lets those people who support him, he supports them by letting them know when product drops on his website. So check out his newsletter. It's whiskeyrivertrading.com and uh, help somebody who also supports the, the community. So. Well, again, I appreciate you. Uh, you have me on again. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I come back just in the nick okay. of time. That's I'm so okay. sorry about that, everybody That's in the right. chat and my guests. Uh, yeah, man. You know what? It's been a while since I've had a rough, rough ride with uh, with my internet, and tonight's the night. So, and it happens to be on one of my biggest shows of the night. So, sure, sure. You're, you're <laughs> doing great job. Very we all appreciate it again. Uh, I will be in touch with you with uh, with names uh, once all the, the drawing has been done, sure. and somebody's going to be very fortunate to get themselves yep. a. Yep. A limited edition right now. That's, yep, that's it is. It is. Goes, it right? is. Good luck cool. to everybody on that. Yep. Thanks very much, Craig. Thanks, uh, you take care, take care. Stay safe, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks a lot, buddy. Awesome. Thanks. And where are we here? Do, do, do. There we go. Oh wow. Yeah. You know what? Uh, quality tools. A lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of great axe manufacturers out there. But if you want something that's North American made, uh, they're made in the United States. So uh, you know, support American. Support American Canadian. Uh, you know, support North America. That's uh, that's one of the best ways to go. But uh, by all means, uh, some great axes over there. And uh, check out our our episode there. Act safety tips. Uh, he shared so much information. If it's going to keep you safe in the backcountry, that's always a good thing. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. We are now uh, all the way in from Killarney. Uh, he's the only person who could say he's paddled across Canada, not only once, but two separate times. Uh, this guy is a beast. And of course, he's done it with his dog Spitzy. Uh, if anybody's ever met this guy and his dog Spitzy, Spitzy's a, a little personality in his own. Uh, the episode was number 25, where uh, Mike and I uh, got together. Please welcome to the live stream, Mr. Mike Ranta. Hey, how you guys doing today? Good, good. That a boy. Crack him if you got him, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> Get her on the go. Absolutely. It's a great show so far. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, you know what? You know, it, it's it's the guests. If it wasn't for my internet being crap, <laughs> be that much better, right? So, what have you been up to, Mike? It's pretty interesting. Yeah, what you up to these days? Well, we got some exciting news for sure. In the la uh, yesterday, um, we've been working on uh, the big the big dipper, the big uh, the big paddle, yeah. uh, one hundred and ten and a half feet long, seventeen foot wide blade, and we've just been accepted into the Guinness World Records for the longest uh, for the largest. Uh, Battle in the world. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about that. That's awesome. Let's see some hand hand claps in the live chat for that. That's, a, yeah, that's incredible. Oh, I get it on there. Yeah. That, and, that, uh, thing, is, that thing is a beast, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it's absolutely enormous, you know, and I can't say enough uh, about uh, Holden Roads and, and uh, the Killarney Mountain Lodge and the town of Killarney and how much support that we've been getting since we, since we moved here. And uh, getting it all put together like that is just awesome. It's a dream come true for me. Uh, next year we're going to be uh, we're putting on the big race. We're we're going to do it from Little Kern to Killarney, and then we're putting the time capsule in the, the big paddle, in the big dipper. So we're inviting people to put stuff in there. You know, the size of your fist, as big as your heart. And yeah. uh, of course, you know, for me, it's it's a very personal thing for me. Also, I I, uh, I built this for appreciation of our veterans, our uh, especially our World War II men and women, American and Canadian. You know, uh, we're, we're allies, and I, I just absolutely love our American uh, big brothers and big sisters south of us. You know, it's it's great to know we got such great neighbors, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's just been an awesome an awesome adventure, and uh, it's been two and a half years in the build. I never built anything like this, so um, 
Yeah, well, and, and the gang really did take a big chance on me, and uh, I'm glad that they uh, glad that they did. And hey, we pulled it off, and yeah. it's it's been incredible. Did, didn't you say one time that when you when you're building this, uh, you expect somebody will come after you for the record, so you built it so it could be extended if it had to be? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I got it. It's situated in the paddle, so if anybody uh, decides to build one bigger, they're going to have to go about 200 feet. Because I could take the handle apart and stretch it out for before it starts looking like a stand-up paddleboard paddle, I could probably get it going around the 200 mark. So, <laughs> wow, well, well, that's what you call forethought, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I wanted to defend my title, you know. So it's uh, definitely it's 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 a unique part of the paddle. Yeah. What what kind of you got any specs on that thing? Like besides the length of it, do you have like how much lumber's got into this thing? How much time's got into it? Honestly, I get people asking that all the time. How many pieces of lumber? I said, I don't know. I really don't know. I never counted. Yeah. There's just so many, and I just actually board, just right? built it, put it together. I was shooting for a hundred feet, ended up being a hundred and ten and a half. <laughs> so my measuring tape was off a bit, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But all you know, all, all in all, when when everything got all said and done, uh, Tim Rock did an amazing job putting the putting the steel together to hold the thing up. Uh, we had uh, Romano come down; he did all the design on the on the on what's holding it up, the whole stand and all that. And it was just it was a huge undertaking project for sure. I didn't think any of us really understood what we were doing until I started building it <laughs> and putting it all together. But you know. When you got a dream, and uh, you, you're you're representing such amazing people across the country, uh, it's 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 not really work, you know. And it's uh, what a, what a proud moment uh, that uh, that we had. It's been such a long time coming, you know. And it's just it feels really good. It feels good That's to do good things for good people. So is it is it in the finished stage now? Like yeah, absolutely. The only thing I got to do now is uh, I got to plug up the back part of it. But over the next few years, I only want the, this thing to be the biggest paddle. I want I want it to be the prettiest. So I'm going to yeah. be doing a lot of inlay, a lot of woodworking on it. And I'm just, over the years, I'm going to make this thing the most beautiful representation for our veterans that you, you'll ever see in Canada. And absolutely, come on up. I'm living here in Killarney. So I'm inviting everybody, come on up and, and check out this paddle. I got a lot of great stories. And I'm always hanging around the paddle or the lodge or somewhere. And uh, like I said, I love chatting with people. Yeah, and so, the, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say uh, one of the big reasons why I'm doing this is for our Warriors Adventure Canada, and it's a group of veterans and first responders helping veterans and first responders with PTSD issue issues, and uh, we're we're having amazing results with it. These canoe trip, these outdoor programs, they're really taking hold uh, to people. As we all know, as canoers, especially solo canoers, or or just Bushmen in general, you know, we understand that just how well that bush and mother nature heals the mind on problems, you know. Anybody can go for a walk in the bush when you're feeling a little bit bad. You come out of that place a little happier, a little bit better understanding. And, and we're seeing these results with these people, and it's just absolutely amazing. And we want to get some trips going in Killarney. They got two going in. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make them. Uh, but they're going to uh, Algonquin for two, two, two one-week trips. And then hopefully we're going to get something going here in the fall when I get back from my, I got to go take care of my father for a bit. And uh, so when we get back into Killarney here, we're going to get some more programs going on too. And I really like to have an annual trip coming here for these uh, beautiful men and women of the, uh, you know, that uh, they're, they're our biggest honor we have in our country. We really mm -hmm. do. And uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's really cool to do, uh, do good things for good people. For sure. Now you you many people know you for being the guy who's paddled across Canada a couple times. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants to hear hear Mike's story, because when he was a guest on the show, he shared all those stories. He shared all the adventures with us, all the the funny things that that, that one portage, which was how big. It was 880 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> and I complained over a 500 meter this past weekend, right? Yeah. But it was tough. <laughs> but uh, you know what? What, what what's, what's in store for Mike? Uh, any any other big, uh, big like, these yeah, absolutely. Any, anything well, else like that coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Something just came to light here in the last month. Uh, well, my, my father's uh, become... Uh, kind of ill, so I'm going to be going down and taking care of him. But at the same time, we've got a guy that's walking across Canada from Scotland, and he decided to get into a canoe in Kenora 
and paddle that journey from uh, Kenora to Thunder Bay. And now he's about halfway there and he's hooked on the canoe and he's, he wants to get onto Lake Superior. So I'm going to try to do whatever I can to help him across and, uh, and show that solidarity and that, you know, that international culturism that we do have in Canada. You know, this guy's, uh, you know, it, it took on a huge undertaking to cross North America by foot. And uh, he's doing it to raise awareness and and uh, for uh, for wildlife preservation and wilderness pre preservation in his home country. So he said he'd walk across Scotland, but it'd only take him about a week. So he decided to take on Canada. So all the all the power to him. And uh, yeah, his name is Mike uh, Talwell, um, and he's just yeah he's he's on a hell of a journey. And definitely can't wait to to assist him with it. Hmm. That's that's incredible. That's 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 good stuff, man. You're yeah. you're you got a good heart. You really do. I don't know if anybody ever I says that to you, but you got all have that. Well, the stuff that you're doing for the veterans and for the, uh, you know, First Nations and stuff like that, you got a good heart, sir. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and especially at a time right now, we're sitting in such a, a volatile time with, 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 you know, with the First Nations. What's going on? We need, we need a little bit more love and, and some compassion. And uh, you know, if we can, if we can show that, you know, we're, we 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 can we can get over these things. And and move forward with it, you know. And uh, yeah, that's 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 the biggest thing I think we can we can do right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, it's been an amazing journey. But I do have a few trips. I want I want to go meet up with Mike. I'm hoping this fall that I'm going to be able to get out a little bit. Um, I I, I want to circumnavigate Georgian Bay. It's just been biting at the. I've been chomping at the bit here to get out there and do it. So uh, with uh, weather providing, and hopefully this fall we're we're, we're going to get things on the go. That's cool. Now, I, I, I was just thinking the same thing, and I'm going to pop a question up. I know I haven't put much up tonight, but uh, Keith Park's asking, Mike, is that a new hat? I was thinking the same thing. Yes, it is. Ah. I did make a new one. I do have my original one yet. It's upstairs. I'm going to retire it. It's getting a little bit ratted, so I built a new one. I built a couple new ones. This is a berry picking hat I made. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've got some little bit. I had a really good friend of mine, uh, Matt and Haley, just had a just had a little uh, little one. So I made a little baby birch bark hat for it. Hopefully uh, that that'll uh, that'll convince the little one to get in the canoe someday. That's and they're awesome. all future canoeists, so yeah, absolutely. You know, you got to uh, uh, you know put put forth that little bit of effort. I and mean, we all have to do this. You know what, what's coming up right now? What's going to come up? We're going to get a huge green movement of people coming out of the cities that are going to come out to the country. And us as experienced bushmen and, and, uh, and fishermen and, and canoers, we mm -hmm. absolutely need to, uh, to help these people get out and make those first steps in there and make it a good positive one. And make sure that they, they learn the respect of the bush too, you know, and how to carry themselves in there makes a big point. It all, uh, it all depends on how mother, you, how mother nature will treat you is how you treat her, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can... If we can, if we could shuffle them in the right direction, nudge them in the right directions, and uh, you know the the bush just makes better people out of us, you know. So we're we're they're coming whether we uh, whether you like it or not. So let's make sure that uh, everybody has an enjoyable, positive experience in the bush. So you know, and and so we can enjoy it years to come. And the more people that are aware about how awesome, delicious the bush is, you know, more people are going to want to preserve it. And that's what we really yep. need to do in our society here today. I think it's going to be a big part of it. Cool, cool. So, really quick, how's Spitzy doing? Oh, Spitzy's awesome. He's over there waiting by the door. Whenever yeah. I flick the camera on, he knows he's got a girlfriend in town here named Misty, so he wants to go see her. He's going to be barking pretty soon there. Just trying to tell him, hey, you know, that old pup still got young, uh, you got that young pup in him yet, eh? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, everybody, this is a, what, what you see is what you get with Mike here. He walks around town with the hat on and the paddle in his hand all the time. And, uh, oh, absolutely! I do. Uh, you know, and I do. I enjoy it. I, uh, I I love walking around Killarney. Like I said, you meet people from all over the place. Uh, get to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it, and uh, we just have a little bit of fun. And I do have a unique ability to make people laugh and get a smile out of them, and, and get them to tell their story too. I love I love hearing other people's canoe stories and their experiences, and it, it's just a lot of fun when you can relate to it. I had an awesome uh, uh, chat with. Uh, uh, Oh, Glenn Green and Carol Van. Oh my God, I could never say her last name proper. <laughs> but they paddled across Canada here just a little while ago, and uh, just an amazing couple, you know. And I always wondered how could you paddle across Canada with somebody else? I would have probably got killed or killed somebody if I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's funny. <laughs>
That's awesome. Well, Mike, you know what? Thank you very much for uh, joining me and coming back on the uh, the grand finale here. Uh, always a pleasure talking with you. And you know what? I hope at some point you and I could get out there and dip a paddle together. That, and, Absolutely. And, you know, that, share that'd a couple be great, of Rob, brews, right? Thank you Seriously, for you keeping friend. up with yeah, and thank you for keeping up with the show that you've been doing. It's been amazing. It's uh, I really enjoy it. I love the chats. I love talking with people and uh, guys like you that put out these things. And uh, it's it's just it's really cool to uh, to have you guys in our corner. That's for sure. And we all enjoy it. We all like a little bit of the limelight. And yeah, uh, yeah. hopefully we'll be able to see each other again at the Toronto Outdoor Show at a canoe symposium. You know what? We can crush a couple of pints and get her done right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be nice when we get back to the getting to go out to those shows and stuff like that and really connect. Yeah, with I'm, I'm really pumped for it for sure. I miss it. I miss the big crowds. I miss talking to all the people. And uh, like I said, just meeting and greeting with people and then, uh, you know, eventually meeting them out, uh, out in the water with the paddle. You know, it's uh, said it's a great life. Yeah, absolutely but, loving life in Clarny. So, everybody, check out Mike Ranta Paddles on Facebook. Mike is on there live streaming probably a couple times a week there, and uh, mm -hmm. he just works away while he chit-chats with everybody. So, by all means, check him out there. Also, his YouTube channel. Watch when he rescues a little baby moose. That's pretty cool when he gets yeah. that on there. So, <laughs> I'm not going to give it too much away because we want him to check it out, Mike. Absolutely. Thanks all again, right, Ron. really appreciate everything. You got, you got some bang-up guests coming up here, so everybody stay tuned. And, uh, yeah, the stories will just keep flowing. We'll just keep up with it. Yeah, for sure, man. All right. You stay safe. Uh, give Pat, Spitzy a little pat on the head, and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. <laughs> Enjoy your beer, brother. Cheers, brother. All righty. Like I said, so you can find him, Mike Randa Paddles, on uh, on Facebook. You can check him out on episode number 25 here on Canoe Hound Adventures. And you can also check out his uh, YouTube channel, which is listed in the description below. Uh, we are now going to move on to, uh, let's see here, where are we? Uh, from episode 28 of uh, season two here on Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, we featured two fellows who are a big part of the Bell, big part of the Bell 5 TV series called Get Outside, uh, a paddling adventure. That, uh, it was pretty cool. I got to watch it, and I re rather enjoyed it. Uh, first, we have a videographer and producer with the YouTube channel Two Men and a Canoe. His name is Ben Stacy. Let's get Ben up here on screen. Hey, how you doing, hello. buddy? I'm doing great. Good. And you get to share the screen with me and the next guy that's coming up as well, who is his sidekick on the Get Outside <laughs> series uh, from Paddling Adventures Radio. Please welcome to the live stream, Sh uh, <laughs> Sean Rowley. I had to look for him in the basement. <laughs> How's it going, Dennis? Not bad, man. Yourself? Not too shabby. Cool. First, I have to thank you because I know tonight is your recording night for Paddling Adventures Radio, and you uh, mm. postponed that with Derek to be able to come on tonight. So thanks very much for doing that. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Ben, what have you been up to these days? Oh, well, just like everybody else, not an awful lot until, I know, until right? now. <laughs> um, you know, I really don't have a lot planned, but I'm hoping just to get out as much as I can. Um, I am actually going tomorrow for a couple of nights um, backcountry up in Algonquin, um, which is great. But other than that, nothing actually planned other than I've been out day paddling, day hiking, and yeah, got a bunch, just, I just got to get out. That's all. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> nice to see you're actually getting content out there. Eh? It's With this pandemic, it's yeah. been so hard to get uh, content. I know I, I could say that because I haven't had a video open so long aside from the, the live streams, right? But it, it's difficult to find the ability to get out and shoot material, right? I, I've even, I've done a few on my day hikes and day paddles, but honestly, I mean, in this weird place where I, I want to make content, but it, I, because we've been sort of locked up for so long, at the same time, I just want to get out there and not think about anything. So, you know, kind of like, do I film it? Or do I just get out there? So I think this year it's going to be a bit of both. Some will be filmed, <laughs> some won't yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, right. So now you you guys did the uh, the Get Outside series. Uh, ben, you you videoed and you had uh, you know many videographers throughout this thing, and you produced this whole show for for uh, Vibe TV. That's right. Five, yeah, Bell Five, five yeah. TV one, yeah, yeah, Bell. I don't, I don't have that. One. I don't have yeah. one. But uh, so, how, how did that go over? Was it uh, very well received? I think so. I mean, um, everybody that's seen it uh, seems to really enjoy it. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we're not getting a fourth season, which I was hoping to. Um, but 
I gotta say, it was sort of the highlight of last year. I mean, it was great, Sean. And I, we had seven days. Well, I mean, that was that was a self, well, a budgetary imposed <laughs> uh, limit right. on the the paddling the Trent Severn from Trenton to Port Severn. Um, you, the way we did, it, we really needed more time, and I would love to do it again. Yeah. But uh, but it was fun. It was it was a paddling adventure. Really, it was it was great. That's awesome. So so Sean now. The, the one day Ben Ben and you connect and uh, all of a sudden you're you're going on this adventure with him, eh? Like, how, how did that come about? Yeah, you know what? Like, I've, I've known Ben for a little while. We've, uh, I've met him out winter camping and stuff. And he was talking about doing this thing and said, you know, here's the plan. Are you interested? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> even a bad day paddling is uh, yeah. better than a, worse, a bad day at work or a good day at work, whatever they say, right? <laughs> Uh, cause, yeah, because like you say, I've I've got a real job that uh, I got to do to keep the roof over our heads and all that too. So, uh, but no, you know, at the opportunity to go do something like that, because I've I've wanted to paddle the Trent Severn, but you know, trying to get everybody involved and stuff, and then when it's basically handed to you on a platter, you can't right. sort of say no. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, it was you know it was it was quite the adventure. Like you say, it was a paddling adventure, and. Uh, I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, you know, I I'd did. Start. But it's way I did buy for this year the um, paddling pass. So uh, I actually <laughs> I went last Friday. We did, I did the locks from uh, Cambridge to um, Talbot and back. Oh yeah. Already. So if we can go out again. Absolutely. Oh, that's cool. I, yeah, I I, I want to go back to uh, the northern part there. Mm. Yeah, it's it's always neat when somebody else uh, has all the plans. So obviously Ben did like ninety nine point nine percent of the planning, and you were uh, you're like, well, we, yeah, we, we <laughs> planned it out together. We oh, really, really sat down and planned out the route. Anyway, we knew we yeah. had seven days. That was the only limiting thing. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah then it was just a matter of figuring out okay what because we had to skip the we skipped the big lakes like Rice Lake, like Lake Simcoe. Unfortunately, yeah. due to the weather, we had to skip a few other sections just because the deadlines. But yeah, it was great. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely the time. Like, if we had more time, like, oh, uh, yeah. That's yeah. cool. So now uh, the big question when you guys were on, on your episode was where can people see this, right? Because because you, you had, had produced it for uh, Vibe TV, you had to be able to, like, they, they, they had first dibs at it type of thing, eh? Is there a date when people might expect to see this hit the YouTube airwaves? I will have to check the contract again. Um, it's I can't remember if it was like six months or a year. I, I'll have to double check it. Um, my, the first season of Get Outside, which was just individual episodes, is on my YouTube channel. Um, actually, I could probably put the second season up. Um, it will eventually be. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> will eventually. Um, I'm, I'm going to be actually producing a different show, totally unrelated to outdoors. This will be cool, a paranormal uh, show for them this year. So even though the rights, I may have the rights now to put it on YouTube, they kind of like drawing traffic to to them. So um, I don't want to piss them off. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> don't um, bite the hand that feeds. <laughs> <laughs> Got to got to got to feed the bank account first. Got to pay the mortgage, right? <laughs> understand, understand. <laughs> so, Sean, what's uh, what's new with Paddling Adventures Radio these days? Um, well, we actually got been actually Derek and I went out paddling on the weekend to do some canoe polling. Oh. Um, that's one of the big things this is, this uh, summer is. I want to really get my uh, more skills built up with the canoe polling, which is. You know, you haven't been doing anything for a while, so your first day out, you feel every little muscle, every tweak, every little sore back and legs and knees, and the balance is just isn't there. So, but by the end of the day, you're you're good. Um, somebody made a comment about I thought you guys were like the U.S. president and vice president. You never went canoeing together, so <laughs> <laughs> no one ever sees us together, right? Yeah, I can't take out both at the same time. At the same time, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, we got that going. We've got a new uh, merch store on our, our Paddling Adventures radio website. Um, and got a bunch of guests coming up, which is going to be really cool. Uh, a lot of personal stuff. I actually went out and got two new GoPro 9s. Ooh. Yeah, two of them. Ooh. Two of them. 
so people could see it coming and going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, going to go ahead and get more into that. I've been um, hemming and hawing about it for a while, and I just – this season, this summer has been, or spring has been a whole lot of me buying stuff. You know, if, <laughs> you know. Um, you when you're sitting at home cooped up with COVID, right? Oh, I tell you, you know what? Twig stoves and new billy cans, new knives, new axes, new new uh, saws, you name it. I'm, I'm just buying it. <laughs> Who's got what? I need it, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I've been using stuff for 30 years, and it, it gets to a point where you've got to replace it. And this just seems to be the year that, you know what, this is could last another year, but if I'm out buying stuff, I might as well just replace this, replace that, and and whatnot. So other than that, planning a few trips for the year. Uh, I actually got a new Quetico map for Father's Day. So I'm thinking Quetico Boundary Waters next year. Um, I've got a, a trip that's going between Toronto and Wawa, hitting a whole bunch of spots. Uh, through Ontario this uh, fall, hitting Tomogamy for a week and a half this fall. Um, I'm supposed to be going down to the Niagara region to hopefully day paddle with somebody. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. his name's Canoe Hound. Yeah, he, he's waiting. <laughs> he's waiting anytime, man. <laughs> oh, uh, other than that, um, yeah, yeah. You know what? Just like I say, just playing things day at a time because you don't know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, that that's the whole th whole thing of this. So, you guys, do you, you two, uh, Ben and Sean, do you guys have anything planned uh, together? Like uh, we we haven't, battle, we haven't, but we should. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we live in both live in Ajax. We have to meet up and do at least stuffings or the lake or something. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I I said I got that paddle pass. You want to join me in the? Can we we'll have to go in the same canoe, but we can go paddling uh, anywhere in, on the Trent, Rideau, any of the the yeah. waterways. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. You know, like I say, I, I think this year is going to be a whole lot of last minute sort of things. Yeah. Um, there's tons of people already booking back countries and and all that sort of stuff. So I think this year the big trips are going to be out, but I can take those holiday days and just do long day trips. I don't mind leaving at three in the morning to get some of our first light and then come back three the next morning. <laughs> you know, like that, that's nothing to me. You know, so you get that full. 24 hour day of fun, you know, um, I think it's going to be a lot of that this year, just so we don't have to deal with the, try to try to get a spot in the back country. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, so urban paddling and stuff around here, primo. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I resorted to up until four days or five days yeah. ago there. We headed uh, up to Tobago. I mean, you know, what a feeling, eh? You plop your ass in that canoe and you just you haven't even paddled a stroke yet. And my buddy Ingo and I just looked at each other and went, oh. yeah. <laughs> that was it, man. And right from then on, it, the rain, the bad weather, like, like whatever, it didn't matter. We were just yeah. gone, right? So, yeah. No, that's okay. good stuff. Well, you know what, guys? Thanks for uh, joining in tonight. Appreciate uh, you piping back in here to uh, the show. Uh, you know, we, we talk all the time, so you guys are always welcome on the show. I look forward to future uh, episodes with you guys, part of it. And, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe one day I might even be on uh, Paddling Adventures Radio. I don't know. I've actually got you on my uh, my guest list. <laughs> we just haven't come up with a date. Yeah, yeah. But, unfortunately, <laughs> no, we've got two days. So you're going to have to postpone your show. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Last episode all summer, right now. <laughs> no. no, you know what? Keep up the good work. How many episodes are you in now? What's uh, uh this Thursday will be 281. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's... I'm at 278. I'm a little behind on listening, but I like listening when I'm driving, eh? In the car. Well, yeah. That's what a lot of people do. They'll download them, yeah. and then when they're going on their canoe trips, they'll listen to them while they're going or sitting in rush hour traffic. You know, yeah. that's that's exactly we become a, a car podcast. Yeah, you know? I watch YouTube videos while I'm driving. Me too. It's great. <laughs> yep. People around me don't like it. <laughs> so really, really quick, just a little plug. Ben Stacy, where can people find your uh, YouTube channel? Uh, Two Men in a Canoe is the YouTube channel and Instagram. Um, I'm actually thinking of uh, doing a series of how to film uh, in the backcountry um, videos. So if people were interested in seeing that kind of stuff, uh, the first mm -hmm. one I'm going to do, I've got in mind is shooting all with your cell phone, just 
tips and tricks and but I'm gonna, I, have, I have ideas for doing like a series on how to film. So anybody who wants to learn a bit about that while doing backcountry stuff, that's what I'm planning for the next, for this summer anyway. Uh, with us, you can find us at paddlingadventuresradio.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that sort of thing. And you can download or stream the podcast from all your favorite podcast downloading sites like Spotify, um, uh, Player FM, iHeartRadio, all that sort of stuff. And either Dennis is looking very intently or he's oh, yeah. frozen again. <laughs> he's frozen. Oh, he's back. Hey, and so I, I told Dennis. Could I be, can I be part of this? <laughs> oh, this internet's growing old. Oh. Okay, so we got that. We, what Ben's up to. Okay, Sean and... Uh, up, upcoming for uh, Paddling Adventures Radio. Anything big coming up in the near future? Uh, not really. I don't think so. Just some of the guests we have coming up. And, you know, like we have a couple big guests that want to be on our show. And, I mean, you must be the same when, when you get these big-name people that you think, yeah, they won't want to be on my show. And then all of a sudden they send you an email say, hey, you know, love to be on your show. So we got a few of them, but we're trying to get nailed down dates in summertime when everything's yeah. starting to open. Good luck. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, can you hit me up again in September? So, <laughs> yeah, no, that's crazy. We'll but, yes, it'll be fun. Good stuff. So, Paddling Adventures Radio, new episodes come out on which night? Every Thursday morning by 9 a.m. There you go. And all the whole backlog can be found at? PaddlingAdventuresRadio.com. Just go to the episodes tab at the top. Awesome. There you go, people. So check out these two channels, podcast, the whole nine yards. And one day soon, hopefully we'll get to see, get outside on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on tonight, guys. Much appreciated. Stay safe and we'll be in touch soon. Awesome. All right. Thanks for having us, Dennis. See you in the green room yeah. later. Bye. All righty. Yeah, there we go. Right. You know what? I'm scratching my we do this whole episode here. Uh, this kills me when these uh, I get these little outages. But anyway, so this next guest is the queen of my internet woes. And she did a fantastic job of uh, carrying the ship and uh, making sure things kept floating forward. Uh, she's what, she, her, her YouTube channel is one of my favorite YouTube channels to watch. Uh, some of the adventures that she goes on, I only wish I could do. Um, and she does it solo. Um, just let's bring her up on <laughs> welcome to the live stream camper christina christina how you doing hi i'm good how are you good so if my Don't internet goes out me. just keep talking no it's not <laughs> happening oh man so christina your, your last time you were on the show here was episode 27 so that was like 10 10 shows ago um for anybody that wants to check it out go back and check it out because you're gonna well no you know what in light of all that happened that day, that evening, you did a fantastic job. And the whole goal of that night was to talk about this uh, Udemy um, uh, course that you put together called Backcountry Camping for Beginners. Right. How's that going? It's going really well. Um, I have over 50 students now. Uh, many of them have completed the course. I have received nothing but positive feedback from people. Um, and it's been really, really cool. Um, I'd like to get more people involved. Um, Udemy has been putting the course on sale now and then, which is cool. Um, but, you know, it'd be nice to, to figure out how to reach, uh, you know, that, that market. But I, I'm still hearing the stories uh, about people going out and doing all kinds of crazy things and not wearing their PFDs and not knowing how to paddle a canoe and store their food. And so hopefully the word gets out and more people start taking it so that, uh, you know, they can be safer out there. Well, you know what, honestly, I'm, I'm a fan of what you've done now. You, you sent me a copy of the course and I, I I'm halfway through it, but this thing called life gotten away recently, <laughs> like with my grandson, I, I've been so devoted to spending time with him that, uh, I, I've kind of put YouTube by the wayside quite a bit with the exception of the show here. And, uh, but I plan on getting into it. And you know what, when you, when you gave me the course, you, you told me, you said, um, I probably won't get anything out of it because I'm an experienced paddler. And I told you, I said, you know what, if I learn one thing out of it, I've learned, I, I've gotten something out of it. And you know what, 
you do things differently than the next person and they do it different than the next person. So it's, it's so handy to pick up new tips for these types of things, whether, you know, it's the way you do it, or you might find a way to do it. That's, that's better. So I encourage even people that, you know, a lot of people might look at it and say, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. Oh, I didn't know that. You know what? So it's a course that can be really for anybody, but the fact that you've geared it towards, newbies as we'll call them the beginners right uh to get them out there i think you've done a good thing and i'm happy for what you did personally i i, I enjoy the fact that you put together that's something that's educational because we all appreciate the back back country right yeah so two yeah. thumbs up in my opinion in thank my you opinion. i appreciate I, that you can really i could really see the hard work so i i noticed yeah. i was on i was on udemy today and there it is i think it's on sale right now yeah yeah, it yeah. might be. It might be. Yeah. Um, yeah, five hours of content. I added a few more videos since our um, interview. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's 120 now, and um, it's right where I want it, I think. So um, people are getting a lot out of it, and I'm getting good feedback. So I think it's a good thing. I hope so, anyways. Now, for anybody that might be interested, I do have the link to Camper Christina's YouTube channel below but i also have the link down there to the course oh thanks and I it's was the link that you sent me across yeah yeah so i made sure it was the link you sent me across and it, it works and everything so everybody will get there no problem but check it out people uh she, you have a couple of intro videos on there to kind of explain the course there's 10 minutes of free videos that people can preview and then you can purchase the course if you want or not it's up to you yeah cool so what's camper christina up to these days as far as uh her solo tripping. I know you just uh, got back from a trip recently. Uh, I did. I just did. I've only done one trip. I got my uh, Algonquin uh, trip in. It was great. I saw three moose, which is unheard of for me. Uh, it was a really, really good trip. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, the following weekend, I was ready to go out last weekend. And then um, my engine blew on my car. Oh, no. So, yeah, Ooh. I have a warranty, but... Um, Getting a rental was just difficult. They, they provide it all, but I'm like, okay, so I know it's hard for you to get me a rental, but I kind of need one with a roof rack maybe because <laughs> I'm going to Tomogamy. And anyways, I ended up getting a rental. They gave me a brand new car. It has 340 kilometers on it. So I got like the accident insurance and all that stuff. And I managed to get the rack up on there. So the canoe is actually on the car right now. Um, I've got three semi what I call my big trips to Tomogamy this year. They're like between five and seven days. Um, one of them uh, I'm going to a totally different place, same access, but totally different lakes I've never been to. Um, another one, um, you know, the big falls trip I did last year. Uh, well, I missed some of those because I went right down the river. Um, so there's the North Channel of the Lady Evelyn that I want to go back and do. And then I'm going to do those waterfalls again. Um, and uh, I've got a couple other surprises planned and a uh, big trip in Killarney as well. So pretty That's excited awesome. about that. Yeah. I, I am envious. <laughs> yeah. And then I got trips in between, but um, I just got some really exciting news the other day. Uh, Jeff from H2O called me and he's dropping off another canoe for me. So oh I'm going to be testing out a 12 foot pack boat. Um, weighs about 25 pounds. It's got like the kayak seat in it. Yeah. So it should be pretty neat. So I'm really excited to take that. I might be taking it on the waterfalls trip. I'm not sure. It depends on um, how okay he is with me getting scratches on it. Um, so it's a <laughs> canoe. It's, it's going to happen. Well. They, they understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So other than that, I've got some uh, podcast interviews and stuff coming up. I'm I, I recorded for John Van Berger's new show. I heard that. Um, the Outdoor Kind in May, but it hasn't come up yet. So I'm waiting for that to air. And uh, CW there, who was just on a little while ago, I'm doing uh, one of his shows as well in August. So super stoked. Well, you're you're going to have a great time with CW because his shows are really structured well. Like uh, he, he, Because his is a podcast and, and yeah. you know, it's he has he has his timeline. Eh? And uh Gosh, when I was on the show, I I hope I didn't push <laughs> push the envelope too well. <laughs> we he's, did, pretty, he's, a, he's a great person to talk to. We did the pre-interview yesterday. It was supposed to be an hour phone call, and I think we were on the phone for almost three hours. So. Yeah, 
yeah. It was pretty cool, yeah. But I, I did hear you on John Van Berger's uh his his uh his maiden episode the there. You yeah. were on there for a short, yeah. Yeah, um, the Baker's Dozen. He's doing something called the Baker's Dozen where he asks 12 questions to every guest. Yeah. And uh, he put that on. So that was really fun. Yeah. But wow. we also did a long interview um, all about the course. Um, and it's it's pretty detailed. So if people are interested in, in learning more about that, um, yeah. they should check that show out. It'll be it'll be up soon, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? That is something that, that a lot of people should be uh talking about i know sean was just on a show i heard them uh mention it in a few of their episodes and stuff yeah. like that too and like i say it's something that's a, a good thing and that the fact that you 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 seen uh you seen an opening there um for lack of a different term right and, and it, it was a void that needed to be filled yeah right and yeah. uh it, it's a good thing I, I think now we just need to get the word out to people that uh there's this course out there that you can take to you know get a little better at in backcountry camping type of yeah, thing right? right well it was it's hard right because on social media you see it we we all see it everybody sees it every day you know oh my gosh i saw this you know family of four out in a canoe and they didn't know which end was the front and you know they had packs and they didn't know how to put them in there and everything was everywhere and you know they attracted the bears and so um you know it's 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 been a really big issue out a lot of people i think they, they see us maybe out there doing this and we post these videos and they're like, wow, this is awesome. Let's get out there. And they just kind of go and they don't realize how much is involved to plan a backcountry trip and to go out there and, you know, the equipment you need or, you know, stuff that you can borrow or hack or, um, you know, how to protect yourself and stay safe and protect other people who will be camping after you. You know, it's it's important. So. Um, I think that's why it got such good feedback from everyone, because I think a lot of people were were all thinking the same thing, you know, like we need to do something. But what is it? And uh, I just came up with this idea one day and I just went for it, you know, I'm stuck at home during a pandemic and uh, took advantage. And you are frozen, aren't you? He's frozen. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Come on. Oh, here goes the buffer. You knew it had to happen once. <laughs> you knew it had to happen because once. I and I didn't do it on the purpose. Show. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little blip, though. Last time it was like three quarters oh, of this show. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and you know what? Since that episode, too, Christina, it seemed like all of a sudden, magically, the internet got better for me here. You're welcome. It, yeah, well, no, you know, and then, and then all of a sudden tonight, it's like it's to bad. me, like to me, this is one of the biggest shows. The season ender, it's the grand finale. It's like, oh man, not tonight, <laughs> all night. You right? saw my project canoe video, right? You know, I'm a witch. Yeah, <laughs> I better not yeah, say yeah. that. People actually on YouTube believed me. People were like, they thumbs down me. They were like, you shouldn't joke about that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm just yeah trying to make a fun video. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we all know we can't appease all the gods out there. <laughs> yeah. <I'm laughs> can't sorry. make everybody happy, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. So ultimately, um, over the next, uh, we'll say month, what, what can we expect from uh, Camper Christina on YouTube? Oh, same as usual. Video every week. Um, somehow I've managed to publish a video every single week, even through the pandemic. I've been doing yeah. what I call paddling adventures, going out on day trips, cooking food out there, um, you know, making it as much camp like as I can without actually camping. And uh, I'm going to keep rolling out the videos. I still have actually some on backlog, which is amazing. I don't know how. Wow. Um, yeah. So big trip. Uh, I'm leaving for tomorrow for five days. Um, and uh, I've got four of those planned. And then I've got about four that I've booked in between there and Halliburton. And then there's a bunch of free for alls in there in between that. So lots and lots and lots of adventures and i cannot wait i was so happy if you saw my algonquin video people were mm -hmm. just like i was like beaming i was so happy to be out there and the bugs were out i'm like i don't care this is great look at me i'm in the back country it was awesome yeah okay. yeah like i just I said with, Ch with sean and uh, uh felt it too <laughs> yeah you, know, you sit in that seat and you go oh <laughs> this is what it felt yeah. like right you yeah. could do it really like you could do it in your own area but when you when you get off on a trip it, it's just that that 
<sighs> it's like a weight, the weight lifted off your shoulders, right? Well, yeah. And thankfully, like I'm now in an area where I'm doing the trips still kind of, but you know, and even going out day paddling and seeing people camping and it's just like, you know, like yeah. you just kind of want to do it too, but. Really, like, really quick comment here for somebody. Christina, your co-host is back. <laughs> <laughs> Mustang nice was, was huge on that night. He, yeah. he was writing all kinds of comments. It, yeah. I think yeah. That's awesome. Well, Christina, thanks very much for joining tonight. Uh, you know, you're always a welcome guest here on the show. Um, hopefully one day it'll be without any glitches. And, uh, <laughs> and look forward to same. seeing you. Yeah. You know what? I, I look forward to If you're ever down uh, Niagara Way, I know you uh, you come down here from time to time. Uh, look me up there. It's do a coffee or something. Yeah, We're, sounds good. Things are Thank freeing up so a little bit. Thank you so much for having me. Please Pardon? keep up the great. Thanks so much for having me and keep up the great work. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, you're doing a good job here and people are loving what you're doing. So keep the adventures alive. Hey, and you <laughs> stay safe and keep, uh, keep some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Safe travels. That's the word I'm looking for. Enjoy your trip. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Have a great night. You too. Bye everyone. Bye. Awesome. So there you go, people. Uh, Camper Christina on YouTube. By, by all means, do check it out. And check out her course. If you know somebody that uh, wants to learn a little bit more about the backcountry camping, by all means, send them to the, her Udemy uh, course there called Backcountry Camping for Beginners. The link is in the description below. Check it out. Uh, you know what? It's, it's a really easy course to do. It's very educational, all broken up into sections and stuff like that. And it's you can you can do a little bit of it. It's all video watching. You can do a little bit and you can stop and go back to it and it keeps track of where you are. So it's a great way to do it. And at the end, you get a little diploma thingy, right? So that's cool. So by all means, check it out, uh, Camper Christina on YouTube as well. So anyways, we are down to uh, our last uh, guests. Um, pretty good night. We were only missing one person. And I won't say who that person was unless I already said it earlier, but I won't. Anyways, uh, a few short weeks ago on episode 35, we were joined by another couple of YouTubers from a couple more of my favorite uh, YouTube channels, uh, Alexis Outdoors and the new channel Timbermates. Please welcome to the live stream, Brandon and Karina. How you doing, guys? Hi, guys. how's it going, Dennis? Good, good. Long time <laughs> no see. It's been, what, like two or three weeks, right? Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheers to you. Cheers to you. So what, what's new, guys? What's going on these days? We have been busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of trees coming down these days. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of work. It's everybody's like, they want to get, you know, they've been staring at this tree for the last six months and they're like, yeah. So yeah, it's busy. They're busy like, yeah, here. I want it now. I yep. want it down now. Yep. Now. <laughs> right now. You know, the, the more we come out of this pandemic, everybody's like, all of a sudden, it's it's got to happen now. Like, it couldn't have happened months ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a six-year-old tree all of a sudden. I think it has to go today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've also had a couple of uh, emergency calls yeah. um, that we had to do. Yeah, we're um, – the odd time, we, we never go out to dinner, and we did a patio, outside patio dinner, just completely random. <laughs> and it was actually a, a bet I lost. I was, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I lost anyway. So we took her out to dinner and of course we just sit down get a text message with a picture. Can you come? There's a tree on someone's house Saturday evening. And it's like, well, all right, give it, give me an hour. I'll be there. I'm like, just let me finish my dinner. And anyway, so uh, it was kind of, it was right on the power line. So Hydra yeah. had to come, turn the power off, drop the line. We had to get it off there in the pouring rain, of course. And, but I made sure to make a video of it. Yeah. So that'll be out on Timber Bates. <laughs> you, go. so. you gotta have that content. You gotta <laughs> yeah. be like Camper Christina and have a have a video every single week, right? That's oh. that's the way it's uh it's gotta be done. Yeah. Yeah, well cool. we kind of had um on Timber Mates, we had one of our milling videos kind of take a run and, and I've always heard that if you have a video that's doing well well, you didn't you don't wanna like put out another video, it might stunt it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've just kind of been letting that go and it's been yeah. doing really great. <laughs> like really great. We just hit 5,000 subscribers on Timbermates, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm going to answer a question really quick from somebody in the chat here because I've, I've been asked a couple times, and this is from uh, Matt Bunch here, and he's asking, will it show? Yep. Is there? Yep. Oh, oh and he's frozen. <laughs> so 
I'm Dennis now. <laughs> um, the lake behind me is. Do you know mm, we should take some guesses. Ooh, I know that see. he never goes to Algonquin, so okay. it's not Algonquin Park. All right. He always goes to like Crown Land or Tamagami or something like that. Okay. So what do you think? What do you guys think in the comments? Yeah, maybe we need some comments here. <laughs> Let's get some good guesses here. Now we got the show. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, he is. He's back. Guess who's back? Oh, he held it down for you. Yeah. So if that happens again, just keep talking about something. Oh, we did. <laughs> Pump your channel. Pump your channel. Anyways, yeah, my, Matt Bunch here. I wanted to answer this here because a lot. I've had a few people ask me what lake this is behind me, and I took this picture specifically because my name, my dog's name is Molly. Like this is Molly Lake from up around the Gogama area. And it was probably one of the best lake pictures I've ever taken. So that's Molly Lake up in Gogama, cool. or up around Gogama, part of the 4M circle loop. So, yeah, check it out. Great loop. Anyways, back to you guys. We were wrong. <laughs> we were wrong. <laughs> we were really wrong. <laughs> we, uh, we had the show there for a second. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You know what? If it happens again, just run with it, man. I'm used to it by now, right? Yeah. So now you guys, uh, after your show, um, I did a show the, the previous week there on couples in the backcountry, and uh, we had um, a couple of, of new up-and-comer YouTubers, and you happened to put together a little day trip with Tunis and Brittany from yeah. Tunis Richards' Freak of Nature, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, and you both have videos, and you guys know how much I like watching videos from both aspects, eh? Yeah. What, what was your day like? You, you guys really hit it off with them out there? Oh, absolutely. It kind of felt like we already knew each other because we had like we had that good chat in the, you know, backstage after their show. And then um, and was it two weeks later, I think we or, or a week later or something we had them. No, we were the week after it was the week after that we had them in our garage or something when we were tuning yeah. into Dennis's show. Oh, Anyways. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and that was right before our trip together. So we kind of hit it off that night. That was the night we met like officially in person and uh and yeah we kind of hit it off with them and we had a really great time uh the next day when we went out with them and or was it two days later anyways it doesn't matter but yeah we kind of hit it off and that that, that uh, collaboration definitely won't be the last time yeah it, it's pretty cool when you connect with people uh that are so like-minded and uh you know in your area close to like in a close proximity where you can actually get together and do yeah. these types of things, right? That's a little yeah. more difficult for me, but I'm hoping actually the other couple that was on that show, uh, Keenan and Ashley, they happened to live like 20 minutes away from me and I had no idea. Oh, wow. There <laughs> yeah, you go. Like, so like they're down in the Niagara area as well, right? And it's like, it kind of blew my mind that they're no, because they, they did a video and I seen the video go, man, if I knew you were coming all the way down here, I would have like tried to connect with you, right? But all the way down here wasn't all the way down here because it was just up the road for them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, we live about that yeah, distance. About 20 minutes as well. Yeah. From Tunis and, and Brittany. So yeah. that works. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So um, now what, what's what's going on with uh, Alexis Outdoors? Anything uh, coming down the pipe with that right now? So right now, uh, Alexis Outdoors, I wouldn't say it's taking a backseat, but it's um, views are like really, really low right now, which – uh, which kind of makes it hard to make content that I like kind of put my heart and soul into. Um, I know some people are still watching, but at the same time, it's like, I want to get that out there for the people who are like, you know, stuck at home and can't watch it and stuff like that. So that usually starts to happen kind of in the fall. So I'm still doing, um, every couple of weeks I'll post a video and just for my own sanity, I'll like get out and do a day trip or something. But now we can do overnighters. So we're planning some, some canoe trips and stuff. Um, actually, Brandon and I were just talking. We would love to do yeah. um, like a a trip where both of both of us have, like I'll have my my solo boat and we'll rent one from Swift uh, for Brandon, mm -hmm. and we'll start together on a trip, uh, kind of do a loop and branch off, and then do a night so like each of us solo one of those nights and then yeah. kind of eat in the loop again and then finish the trip together. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about that. <laughs> yeah. We thought it'd be kind of interesting for, I was saying like, I've, I've done a little bit, like not a lot, uh, like we, we discussed that uh, when we were on, but I've never been out there overnight by myself. So I'm like, you know what? I'd, I'd kind of like to try it. Just kind of test my metal. 
see uh, see how it is. And um, but we also like to do things together. So we're like, well, maybe we could do a little bit of both. And then as soon as she teaches me which way to point the camera thing <laughs> and how to turn it on, I'll take one and she'll take one, and then we'll get the two perspectives of how our our day and our our night went, and then meeting up. Uh, the following day, however we decide to do it. But yeah, I, th I thought it'd be kind of interesting to yeah. get the two perspectives. And I think it'd be really cool. And I've also never done like a, I've never stayed in a hammock on a trip. So I just got like a little bit of a hammock set up. Nothing like crazy fancy or anything. But... <laughs> Reverse double solo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody, everybody in the chat, this is their idea. Okay, yeah. nobody copying that. We want to see it from these two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> you, almost you, got, you almost got to watch what you give away, right? Yeah. <laughs> <That's so true. laughs> Anyways, okay. It's gonna be fun, and we said it first here on on Canoe Out Adventure Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's like that's like a timestamp, right? There you go. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're like super excited to do that, yeah. and we also have a lot of exciting things going on with Timbermates. So kind of trying to juggle the two right now, and I'm excited about both, and it's hard to like contain it and get my day to day. Stuff done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? Don't don't stop doing the content for Alexis Outdoors because too many people really love your videos. So oh, I would never. It's part of me, right? Like I love being out there. But my favorite time of year to camp is fall, winter. Um, I really like. I'm really liking cold weather camping. The more that I see how, like, when the bugs come out, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I miss the cold weather. But uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get some really good trips into Alexis Outdoors here soon. Um, we're already planning that, so I'm excited for it, and uh, it only gets better as the sun as the summer goes on. So okay, so I'm gonna throw another comment here up on up on screen because it's something I'm gonna ask you, and then I'm gonna pipe in on it myself as well. And it's a question from Brian here, and he's saying hammock camping is the way. Tough though to do with a dog. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. You'll have to take Grizz. Yeah, can I pipe in on that though? How how big is Grizz? What, what's Chris weight? Yeah, fifty pounds. Like forty-seven pounds. Okay, my 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 dog my dog Molly weighs about. She's in the mid mid to high forties. Okay. And I just got back from a four-day ca uh, canoe trip up in Tomogamy, and I'm a hammock camper. And every trip I've done for since I've had Molly as a pup, she slept in a hammock with me. I bet you Grizz would be fine with it too. He's yep. so chill, and when he conks out, he's out. Like he's oh, out. Look at this. So, so Brian, Brian, chat, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's how I heard a guy. But uh, you know what, Brian? Check out my video that I'm going to put out next week, and I actually have footage of Molly in there in my hammock, laying with me. She's a little Springer Spaniel, and uh, I don't know where she is, but yeah. But it, it is possible if you master the technique. I've got a Hennessy hammock, which is an ASIM lay, right? And there's just enough room in there that she likes to cuddle anyways, right? And it's funny because I got the picture. She's laying with her arm across my chest and her, her <laughs> back hunch across my, my belly, right? She's like stretched right out. So it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you Grizz did it too. He's pretty chill. Yeah. 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 So that, that's cool stuff. <laughs> That's cool. all right. So uh, what, what's the next video that we're going to see from you guys? I, I might have missed something here on the weekend because I wasn't here to watch anything. But uh, have you come up with anything here on this past weekend? Uh, depends what channel. But no, not, nothing uh, Nothing this past weekend. We, but well, we have been filming a little bit. We've been filming. Yeah. Part of our – we're doing like a little preemptive filming for some of the, the bigger project we have for Timberweights. So we've yep. been working on setting up for that, and we've just been filming a little bit to show kind of the – the stages of setting up for this and um, a little bit of that, a little bit of emergency work over the weekend. Yep. That. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's only so many hours in the day, unfortunately, between uh, work and two channels and family and yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a little yeah, bit such, as, such as the life of a YouTuber. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have a really awesome trip planned next week with, uh, with Nate Muskoka. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so, cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 We're gonna be hitting up some crown land, do a little fishing. Um, I, I don't know if he's in the chat, but I I, I drove right by uh, Algonquin Outfitters last night. Uh, they were closed already, and uh, had to take the detour, which takes you up kind of past his house almost. Right, yep. so I was up his neck of the woods, and I couldn't find his phone number in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Actually, it's really funny that you say that. He was in the chat earlier. I don't know where he went, but yeah, um, I tried texting him to like. 
because uh, we were just messaging through Instagram. I was like, I'm pretty sure I have Nate's number. So I'll just start texting him through that to like coordinate for our, our collaboration. And uh, <laughs> and I texted what I thought was his number. Oh, there, he's in the chat. Yep, and I texted what I thought was his number and it ended up being the Algonquin Outfitters <laughs> number. So whoever was working that day got like one the lady who says like text you have a text to landline. <laughs> oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three hours. Like, you have no idea who it was from, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. He's like, well, I bet they had a good laugh. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I say, we whenever I pass by uh, the Huntsville area, I always like to stop in Algonquin Outfitters now or, or you know, at least stop by for a drink or something because Martin Pine lives up that area too. So we all connect together, right? So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to try to do the same thing when we go to Huntsville area next week. Uh, I want to stop into Swift and uh, kind of do a, a few other errands in the area and kind of say hi to some people. Who's, all the cool people live in Muskoka. Who knew? Yeah. yeah I'm sure she got kind of, kind of oh, oh, yeah. It would have been Judy, he says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, good good to see that you guys are uh, keeping yourselves busy, uh, not with only one, but two different uh, YouTube channels. I, I have a hard enough time managing one, and you're trying to flip two, so that's, uh, that's a good thing. Keep the content coming. People are enjoying it. Um, I know I'm enjoying both channels. Uh, I'm that guy sitting on the front lawn watching the, the tree cutters <laughs> up there, and, uh, you know, living trees and stuff, right? So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we've got a uh, we've got a really big project on the go for Timbermates, so we're really really excited about it, pushing for it. And yeah, like you said, trying to manage both channels and trying to get out for Alexis outdoors, it's gonna be fun. Good Lots stuff. Fun. Well, I wish you guys safe travels there when you get out on your uh, your trip there. I'm looking forward to if you do that uh, that trip. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. You know, the one that we won't speak any more of. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Same with all the cool stuff with Timbermates. So keep up the channels and uh, we will talk to you too soon. Thanks so much for having us on, Dennis. Once again, anytime. And like I say, everybody, you can feel free to check out their YouTube channels. Links are in the uh, the bio or the description down below. And uh, also, you guys are on Instagram too, right? Quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. So you can check them out on Instagram as well. Brandon, Karina, thanks very much. Have yourselves a great night. And thanks for being part of this. Uh, this grand finale. <laughs> you Thanks, too, Dennis. Guys. Thank you. Okay, guys. Great night. All righty. All righty. You know what? That uh, that about closes up the show tonight for guests, except for one. And for those of you that are regulars on the show, you know a regular guest that I have on the show. And uh, I, I wrote an intro for him tonight, and something come up, and it – it couldn't happen that he couldn't make it. So I am actually going to read the intro and then I'm going to do something a little special. Okay. Uh, lastly, to close the show, I admire a friendship and the support I have received from this guy. He, along with Hap Wilson, have been uh, people that I have looked up to for many years for their contributions to camping and backcountry uh, canoeing and stuff like that. Uh I've traveled many of this guy's canoe routes that I found in his books. He has like 17 different publications, not all canoeing books, but uh, he has many publications with tripping all the canoe information that you need and stuff like that. Uh, he has been on multiple, multiple, multiple episodes of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. And uh, like I say, we, we built a pretty good friendship here over the past two seasons. Uh, he couldn't make it on tonight, but he did send this along to me. And I thought I would share it with everybody. So here goes. Okay. Hey, Dennis. How you doing? Uh, I can't make your show tonight. Sorry, I'm off on a, on a big tour, a camping tour to southwestern Ontario, doing like 18 different parks uh, here. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing's gone wrong. No, no. Uh, I got a blood vessel thing blow, blowing up in my eye. Um, uh, my dog's belly is not feeling well. Um, and Oliver and Christine is getting an attitude. Um, they just thought it was going to be fun. They didn't know it was going to be a heat wave. They didn't know that caterpillars were going to poop from the sky. No, no. Um, well, great job this season. Fantastic. Keep up the good work. We all love you. And say hello to everybody. Cheers, Dennis.
<laughs> you couldn't expect any less from Kevin, right? Uh, yeah, him and Christine are out on a tour right now, southwestern Ontario. They're doing all kinds of uh, parks and uh, conservation areas. And I guess they're having a hard time, but I guess they're getting pooped on by caterpillars. I, I don't know. I think it's those gypsy moth uh, caterpillars. Uh, you know what, everybody? We've had a great show tonight, and um, I just wanted to share one, a couple more things here before uh, we wrap up tonight's show. I, I really appreciate everybody showing, but over the past season, I've had the opportunity to work with so many like-minded people who share the same love for the outdoors that I do, uh, whether it's in a canoe or a kayak, by foot or by any other means. We all have the same desire to want to be outdoors and enjoying the fresh air, all the scenery and the experiences that nature has to offer. Uh, some are full of adventures and some are like, you know, weekend warriors like myself, but ultimately we're all the same. This season we covered so many awesome topics, both educational, political, and once again, they all pointed back for our love for the great outdoors. I just wanted to once again thank everyone who has been behind me to produce this show. The amount of good feedback I get from so many people that uh, I do not even know that yet I feel I know a bit of every one of you that are regulars are on the show. There again, because it comes back to this love for nature and, uh, you know, what we all share, something common, right? Uh, I also thank you for all the support uh, for the channel, whether it's monetary by being a channel subscriber, super chats, uh, whatever it may be, or just by being a subscriber to the channel, watching my videos and hitting that thumbs up button down here. Uh, it all makes all the hard work for producing these shows well worth the while. I must not forget my family and close friends who all put up with this guy you all call Canoe Hound. Uh, they see the amount of time I put into these uh, shows and I and how much time I spend setting them all up. And they hear far too many stories about the shows, my guests, the topics, things like that. Uh, sometimes they all look at me with a smile, a wink and a nod and say, yeah, 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 okay. But uh, they all understand the passion that I have for doing what I'm doing. Uh, special thanks to all my past guests and the guests who were on tonight, of course. Uh, without you, there wouldn't be a show. Uh, thanks for sharing your passion with me and all of our viewers. I mentioned it earlier that uh, you're very kind and generous to give yourselves to them. Uh, you know what? For those people that haven't got the ability to get out and do what we do by sharing these adventures or our adventures with them, it's something that's great. You know, it's uh, it's something that's warm and heartfelt and uh, we're entertaining and we're educating and that's a good thing. Uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in tonight. All of you in the chat that have been uh, tuning in all season, thank you very much. Um, don't forget to send your swag giveaway answer to coasprize at gmail.com. That's coasprize at gmail.com. Let me know what your favorite episode was this season. And it could even be this one for that matter. It doesn't really matter. I just like to know, um, have your chance to win. I will be back again in September. Uh, like I said, I've got some great guests lined up for next season. Uh, things are already rolling. This is the season now where I get to go play and hopefully shoot some videos and uh, share what I enjoy doing with you as far as tripping and stuff like that. I will have a video out next week on my four day tomogamy adventure with my good friend Ingo from Kid Products. Please do check them out. If you're on the in the market for a reflector oven or a twig stove or any of the other accessories, visit kidproducts.com. And uh, check them out. Their, their stuff is, and I, I, I say this not just because they're a sponsor and they're, because they're friends, but because they truly do make a good product. So by all means, check them out. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, that thumbs up button. Uh, I'll be posting a lot of trip videos in the coming weeks. So to stay tuned with what's happening with Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show in the off season, follow us on Facebook at Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. Big surprise there. All the links are in the uh, description below. And by all means, let's stay in touch in the off season. I would love to hear from you, uh, see pictures. I'd love to answer some emails and comments. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for a great second season. I'll see you in, season, in September, season three. And remember, please keep the adventures alive. Have a great summer.